The following program is hosted by immature, irreverent, obnoxious, and often disgusting young men. Listener discretion is advised. This time on Nude Clan. Pong! 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 Shall we play a game? Welcome to another episode of Nude Clan. I am Joe. I am Caleb Craig. And this is Cameron. Caleb Schweiss. And today we're going to be talking about the history of video games part one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're going to play a little, I guess, sort of a game as we go along with oh, yeah? it. Yeah, I got some high chews to pass out. Oh. Caleb Schweiss really doesn't want us eating on the show. But you know what? <laughs> if they're not talking and they put their microphone away from their face like this. Then we should be okay. Especially high chews, though. It's just like, well, Joe has proven that he is incapable of eating while recording. <laughs> That's true. But and I we've will. been recording for almost two years. So. I will not be putting the high chews in my mouth. Okay. But I will be putting my high chew in all Yun's mouths. Yeah, you're going to do it all sensual like. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and then I'm Joe here's slowly take notice. off the wrapper and. And Joe's a fucking quiz! <laughs> Joe denies vehemently that he doesn't do any gay jokes, but <laughs> we'd open with one. Uh, uh, that was not a gay joke. That was just true. That was just you know, gay. It, it is- <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Okay, what has everybody been playing, Caleb? Um, I recently picked up two new games, uh, Tom Clancy's The Division and uh, Dying Light, and I've been playing both of those. So is how, is the division a new game? It is a new game, yeah. It's kind of like uh an RPG um shooter. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's like imagine Rainbow Six but with like stat points and uh you know like levels and loot. That's not Rainbow Six at all. That's kind of what it is. So I mean, Borderlands, like, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, like, it's a, it, it's kind of like a third-person shooter, and uh, it, it feels kind of more realistic, but then it's also, like, not, because, like, you shoot a guy, like, a couple times, and he I've, doesn't die, so. I've read somewhere, it's like, it takes the reality of our world, but then tries to put RPG elements into it, which are not realistic. Ooh, okay. It's very <laughs> interesting, and I've, I've it's like It's like a mashup that really hasn't been done before. Yeah. So, did you ever play the original Rainbow Six? I have, yeah. Okay. Because that's the one I'm used to. I know a lot of people played Rainbow Six 3. I don't ever know what happened to Rainbow Six 2. I think it was lost with time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Cameron, do you have any more information on the Rainbow Six series for me? <laughs> I do not. I, that's okay. not when I played. All right. I always played that on the PC. It was kind of cool. You would like do your strategy for how to clear Actually, the, the building or whatever. Is there a... And then you would take over one person on one team... Or you could switch it out or whatever, and then you would have to do your strategy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you saying? I just is there a Rainbow Six that made it out to the PSP? Yeah, there, I think yeah, there I was because yeah. I did play that one. Okay. Which one was that one? I don't remember. I can't remember the title. Who I cares? Just know there They're was all the same. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. Is that all you've been playing, Caleb? Uh, yeah, just, just those, those two, two games mostly. Haven't you recently picked up Far Cry Primal? I did, yeah, and I did like a, a beginning part of it just so I could get past like the. Oh, no, so you just lied then? So you no, that was, that was last week. I already mentioned it before. Oh, okay, um, okay. Cameron, well, I have been playing basically only Destiny oh. this week so far. Okay, how's that going? It is going well. I actually, I think I have beat the game, but it feels like it should be the middle of the game, not the end of the game. But <laughs> uh, no, I told you guys you got to get uh, Taken King. Get I think the I story. want to at this point because it, I feel really cut off because they alluded to being more and now I have to pay in order to find out what that more is. Yeah, I, I felt really gypped at and the end of that game. And you're planning on paying for it then? Uh, at this point, I kind of want to because oh, uh, I have a gun that I've never I'm never going to get to use because the game ends. 
I mean, I could probably just go back and play some missions or play it online, but come on, I want to progress. I want to see the enemies progressively get harder. <sighs> so, <laughs> are you going to get Taken King before next week when you're doing the Destiny review? Oh, or are you just going to review I Destiny? Can't. So... So it's just going to be destiny for, just, for now. For now, just destiny for now. Okay, all right. You yeah. can always you can always come back and do a. Yeah, I can always come game. back and do take. That's a how game. we should handle add-ons in this show. We should do a uh, look back. So, oh. like, if we were to do a Battlefront mm-hmm. episode, like Cameron and I have been wanting to, but there's just not enough content. We could do later down the road part two, where we look at the new patch, look at the updates, see what uh, new content they've added. But as of right now, I mean. I've been playing just small amounts of Destiny myself, and I enjoy it, but really what it makes me want to play is Borderlands. It doesn't make me want to play more Destiny. It makes me want to play (laughs) something that's better. See, when I play (laughs) Destiny, I want to play Halo, but I've never played Borderlands, so that's that's part of it. Oh, it's like hints of Halo, but it's definitely Borderlands. The progression is very similar. Speaking of Halo, I did recently get a uh, Xbox One from my brother, and he has the uh, Master Chief collection, so I did start the campaign for Halo 1. Well, he gave you an Xbox One? Yeah. Why? Because he hasn't been playing it, so I well, I understand for that. Like two hundred bucks. He's okay, he oh, bought it for two hundred bucks. bucks. Okay, so he didn't. It wasn't like a gift. Yeah, yeah gave equals. I didn't gift. say gave. I, I said like I did got. You, yeah, that yeah, implies. Yeah. Well, well, maybe I don't know. It's borderline. Whatever. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I played a little bit of the little bit of Destiny it's with like Cameron. It's probably like I would assume like if his brother gave him an Xbox One, <laughs> just knowing his brother very little. Uh, but judging him a lot, <laughs> I would assume that like it was he was like in on a drug deal and like the Xbox One was part of it. It's a and hot he was item. like and he was like Caleb, take this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like in The Sopranos when he gives his neighbor that box, but he doesn't tell him what's inside. Yeah, exactly. Know, there's, there's like nothing inside it. Yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, anyway, yeah, I played a little bit of Destiny with Cameron. Ran into some network problems early on. I I don't know what was going on. I think something was iffy with the servers. Cameron was fine, but it kept reloading the same fucking cutscene like multiple times for me. And then it just <laughs> skipped the cutscene. So I was like, what the fuck? But, uh, you know, that was fun. I love the loading screen to loading screen mentality. That's like a fresh <laughs> new look. <laughs> Here we are to the next loading screen. Yeah. and uh, Which opens to the new loading yeah, screen. Yeah. And now we're going to fly above the planet while we load the planet. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, that's been fun. I've been doing some post game stuff in Final Fantasy IV, the after years, um, taking out some of the super bosses at the end. Okay. A lot of uh, m- very minimal effort grinding. The problem I'm running into, though, is my guys are so high level that they're killing everything before I can do my auto cure that I throw in with my white mage. So, so I have, have to, to go into the menu and cure. Yeah. That sucks. So earlier on, it was actually easier and faster to level up than it is now because they just do so much damage. He doesn't get to cure. <laughs> so that's a weird thing to run into. <laughs> and I've been playing a lot of crisis core final fantasy seven. I'm up to like six hours in that game. Okay. I got like two hours in it. Yeah. You're crisis probably core. about halfway to where I'm at. Okay. But I've done a bunch of extra stuff. So everything's really easy to kill. I've done do one this. extra mission. That's all I've done. <laughs> they're they're a good time to level up and get new items, but you know, I don't like the random leveling. Like it, it it makes me. I know it. There must be some sort of timing thing with it where it puts it up at the right times. You know, I don't know you know, if that's so that you're true. properly Something leveled. Like that. But like, if it were true chance, then that means that someone out there, like couldn't beat the game because it was too low level. Well, I don't know. It depends because I I think but it makes it seem like it's a chance. When your bar is like more active, I think you level up more because there was a mission a little bit ago where I leveled up twice and the missions aren't very long. I mean, there may be 10 minutes at most for a long one with treasures on opposite ends kind of a thing. But I leveled up twice in one thing. I can't say I'm the world's biggest fan of the battle system at this moment. It feels really clunky. Yeah. Engaging battle yeah. mode. I really like it, so I think okay. you're wrong. I like the dodge and the block. Right. I might like it after six hours, but at this two hour mark, I'm kind of. It's just X button, X button, X button. That's and the only time. I've only had one strategy time, like with Bahamut. I assume the game's going to get harder, but that's the only time where I actually had to strategize when to heal. Oh, it gets tough when you're it's doing tough. the optional stuff. So. The missions. I, there's a few where I've had to okay. throw on barrier and, like, regen, but. Yeah. We'll talk about that more 
in a few weeks on Ultima Final That's Fantasy. That's true. Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy <laughs> podcast, where you can uh, listen to part one and uh, very soon part two of our Final Fantasy IV, the After Years review. Uh, do we have plugs for this show right now? Cameron, you got the notebook next to you. You want to give us our plugs? Well, oh, what are you guys, right. where can we be reached read. on Twitter? Let's see if I can Let's do it without messing up like Joe does every time. Okay. Are well, this right here in the open? Yeah, they're, they're right there. All right. <laughs> so you can find us on Facebook.com at Nude. That's spelled like in E W D Nude Clip. All right, you already podcast. fucked up. <laughs> and at UFF Podcast and at Obsidian Bah. That's a B A H. Oh, that's okay. for Caleb. Okay. So we can do our individual plugs. All right, so oh, I'm at that, Joseph uh, DeGaulier, J-O-S-E-P-H-D-E-G-O-L-Y-E-R. Oh, man. And as Cam Cam said, I am at Obsidian Bob, B-A-H. At UFF Podcast. And then you can find me at Nude Clan Cam. Oh, yeah. Hey, I saw you put out one single tweet, by the way. I did. Yeah. I, did yeah. I did a tweet because What's... I found something that was relevant that I've said before. Mm-hmm. So I had a tweet about it. What's with you guys not streaming your games, Caleb? What the fuck? I was streaming. No, you you haven't for like two weeks, man. Still there. What no, you, still. Whenever, I've never streamed before. Whenever you play a PS4 game, just stream it. There's are, no pressure. Are you, are you jerking off at the same time? Like, is that a I thing? I know the games I, are I beautiful be, now, but... <laughs> man, you can find us at twitch.tv slash gaming, spelled correctly, because Twitch isn't a bunch of fucking pussies. And they'll let us put nude in our title. It's a bunch, like, in Facebook is a bunch of pussies. A bunch. Like, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Like, millions, Isn't I there, swear. like, two billion people on Facebook or something? Okay, there's at least one billion of them are women. Probably well, pussies more. come in bunches. You can yeah. pick off the tree. Yeah, but women it's aren't just... A pagot. That's okay. what a bundle of pussies is, is a pagot. <laughs> like, sticks. Wow. <laughs> We're uh, going down a dark so, path. No, it's <laughs> making an official word. And you can email us at nudeclanpodcast at gmail.com. But yeah, you guys should get on the streaming. Um, I've been streaming Destiny, but the only nights I've really had time for it since I'm doing the Final Fantasy Monday and Wednesday has been Tuesday and Thursday, and I get out of that out of class at like nine thirty, so I'm starting at like ten, so no one's awake mm. to watch. But uh, yeah, you guys should jump on there and stream I, whatever you're playing. I played Rocksmith for a little while yesterday, but I think I might have been still under Destiny. So I stopped, and then I was like, no one was fucking watching me anyway. So I just like... I've been wanting to stream my Destiny Rocks, play, man. but my microphone, as you point out, is just not good enough for that. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron is like anti-mic, apparently. Yeah, Cameron can't buy a microphone to save his life. Uh, <laughs> He's all about the receiving end of audio quality. The nice headphones and <laughs> oh, yeah. the bass bar, the little uh, little thing you got. Yeah, where they made that trench gun, the trench gun that yeah. sounds amazing. It's just beef, <laughs> but never the uh, never the input. Hey, because uh, I, I don't get to enjoy the in, the the input. <laughs> since, since I started Rocksmith again yesterday, um, just for just for kicks, because I just felt like playing my guitar. Mm-hmm. I know some of us had the goal this year of maybe learning a musical instrument, or at least like trying to. Who was that? I think it was you. And me. And I think Cameron started and you, it, and, and I was me. like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Okay. I think we should do the 90-day Rocksmith Challenge. That's what I was thinking. Okay. And unfortunately, with Rocksmith 2014, there's not really, like, a campaign path. So I don't know how you guys feel about going into Rocksmith 2014, where it doesn't tell you what to do. Well, it, there's like, tutorials, is It isn't just there? says, go... It'll have menus, it'll is. have a couple. It'll have a little pick next to things when it's like Rocksmith, uh, Rocksmith recommends or whatever. And you can of course try those, but there's no linear path. I'm pretty sure. What though. I liked about the original Rocksmith was that was that it was like okay, you can just start a campaign basically, and it takes you through. It it gives you a song, and then it has lessons next to it. You finish the lessons, and then you go and do a, a couple more simplified versions of songs. Okay. And you just move up from there, basically. With Rocksmith 2014, it's learn a song, do a lesson, or play around, or do all these other things. It doesn't have, like, a do this, then do this. So how do you guys feel about that as people who maybe would want structure, or maybe you don't? I don't know. Well, I mean, you can just take 
the initiative and structure it yourself. Right. That's, That's what I was thinking. If you can go available. online though, and you can even look at lists online of people who say, Hey, if you really want a progressive learning experience in Rocksmith, this is how you should do it. And you can probably just follow that list. Yeah. I think we could, I think we'd be fine to get the newest. Cause one. this doesn't the program, the way it reads the guitar better in this uh, newer version of Rocksmith. Than Rocksmith 2014. There is a small delay that could be very annoying. Um, well, can't you calibrate a delay? Like, <sighs> You I know might be able to, but the, the like first that. the first Rocksmith has a small delay, and I'm not the only person who's complained about it. Um, I've seen it elsewhere online. I'm not sure. There might be a way to fix it. But 2014 is a lot better on that front. Like, it it reads okay. the program a lot better. It's also, like, more pleasing to the eye. So, like, Rocksmith 2014 is better in every single way, except that it doesn't have a, a, structured, learning a structured learning plan. All right. Which uh, kind of bugs me that what you guys would have to do if you guys were to just pick up Rocksmith 2014, it's like, well, dig around. Well, I'd have to get a guitar, too, obviously. It doesn't have to be a good one, though. Uh, Yeah, you can get one for $100. Yeah, that's not much. No, it's not. Um, So if anybody wants to do the Rocksmith 90 Day Challenge, we should start talking about that. All right. Sounds good. Um, In fact, after we do our Far Cry Primal, I think that'd be a good time to start it, because then by the time we have to do the next um group review... Could be all about Rocksmith. I'm just saying. I would not take part in that. Why not? I'm not going to do Rocksmith. Why not? I don't want to learn the guitar. I don't, don't want to learn anything any, that could actually benefit me in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah? How is the guitar going to benefit me, Cam Cam? <laughs> He's pick up chicks, obviously. I already have a chick. I don't need to pick up chicks. <laughs> well, Come to on, learn Caleb. something constructive. I heard music's good for your brain. Nah. It is no supposed need. to be. Why not? Well, Caleb's already a lost I am wondering, like, way. how come, like... <laughs> Dude, it's already gone. If I am going to learn uh, an instrument, I would rather be like doing the saxophone or something like that. Well, I, I, wanna, don't I think wanna they be have Saxsmith 2014. I want to be saxy. But, uh, you know, it's a good thing you're not a big fat guy or this would be really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Wow. Why is that even a drop? Why not? I asked for it. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> I was just waiting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. Well, okay, I, well, that's too bad then, I guess. Yeah, we'll have to do it for something else. But um, For fun, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. yeah, do it for fucking fun one of these times. Yeah, no, I still think that we should do the 90-day challenge and actually review it, because that's part of what yeah. marketed Rocksmith is that 90-day challenge. I would like to see if you guys actually did it every single day, every day for like 30 minutes. Um, I know you're putting your head up like that, but I know you have a ton of free time, Cameron. <laughs> well, we have May, June, July, and then most of August free from school. Yeah. Um, you're not taking summer, are you, Cameron? Um, I I want to, but let's take a look at it. Okay. Um, But yeah, this is something I think should definitely be... If we're going to do it, we should do it over the summer. That's the only time I can see it being feasible at all. How about June, July, August? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't care when. All right. Well, I... I plan on taking a very, very long hike. Um, yeah, he's everyone's... getting in touch with his native side. I am. I, nice. it's a, I have one sixteenth native side. Real and long go walk. Get in touch so with he's it. doing one sixteenth of their <laughs> walk. <laughs> oh. I wonder if that's. I wonder how close oh, to accurate. Wrong. I wonder how close to accurate that is. I, I don't <laughs> know. Distance. I don't know how long the walk was. It's, it was pretty fucking long. My walk is going to be two hundred eighty. So miles. pretty soon we'll see. We'll see Joe's picture of him on a walk, but then him not actually completing it. No, what'll happen is it'll be, or it'll be this him is like not funny. <laughs> this is uh this is dark dark yeah. stuff yeah is it dark? no i was gonna say you're gonna get really in touch with it and you just send us a photo you're like super tan and like a loincloth <laughs> with like a, with like an eagle on your arm that goes out and hunts food for you you know a spear <laughs> i really wish the native american side took over a little bit more but the scottish the the small scottish part of me obviously took over the most yeah uh, which is unfortunate <laughs> for the skin tone. Yeah, for the, for the skin tone, for the hair color. It's all Scottish. You okay, right. Cameron? Yeah, my zipper rubbed against the thing. Well, we do have Ooh. a question this week. Uh, okay, what's our question? All right, so it's titled, Thoughts on this short video clip. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, Christ. it's actually t- titled, Games in the West, Violence versus Sexual <laughs> Themes. But this is our single question asker, Shinra, right? Why yes. are these always videos? Let's look. Well, I don't know. Because why not? 
or entertaining. What are you allowed to show in video games in America? A dude getting splattered. Like fucking crazy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> dude got beheaded. Nice. Oh, oh my God. Bitch dude. Got owned. Not allowed to show a butt. No Bouncing boobs. boobies. All right. All right. I so intense gore, but anything slightly sexual is a no-no. All right. So uh, uh, he says it shows what is generally accepted in gaming in the West versus what gets criticized and bans from being released here. Recently, the Dead or Alive Extreme 3 game, which is the third game, thank you, in the long-running M-rated <laughs> Dead or Alive Extreme series, has been confirmed to not come to the West because of how the game would be criticized over here, despite the fact that Extreme 1 and 2 both came out on the Xbox and 360 in America. These games are actually pretty tame without any nudity and just involve women from the Dead or Alive fighting series playing volleyball on the beach, play games in the pool, and you can buy them new bikinis and accessories to wear. <laughs> Here is some information. There's a few articles. Yet M-rated games that show guys' heads getting ripped off with tons of gore are easily sold in the West and won't be as strongly criticized. What are your thoughts on this double standard? Thoughts on people okay with M-rated game violence, but any M-rated sexual stuff is a big no from them? All right, so I have a, a theory why this is the case, and I, I it's actually a pretty factually based thing. So <laughs> over here, we have a very... Uh, okay. Refutes the arguments before they happen. <laughs> well, so over in you know in the in Europe, they're they're less associated with violence, but more okay with sexuality. Now, a lot of the reason behind that, I think, is the just the sheer amount of wars and violence that they've seen in real life. Right. So as Germany, opposed to us. Germany bans violence. Yeah, stuff. Germany is the <laughs> center of violence in Europe for a long, for many many. <laughs> Wars. These <laughs> Welcome wars. to the violence center. Uh, yeah, like a lot of wars being fought there, and uh, sex to them, it's not a, it's not a weird taboo thing. That's like a, it, it is in some ways, obviously. Um, but a lot I uh, think Western. You're wrong, yeah. but, well, I know I'm right, and I know you're wrong because uh, no, listen to me. Just shut the fuck up for like two seconds. <laughs> this is like a challenge for Joe. Let's all be supportive it's, here. It's, it's not gonna happen. So what happens is. Uh, yeah, there's less, there's more violence. It's been a much more violent history over there. So they're less keen to allow violence. Whereas the sexualization stuff, it's a little bit more, they get a little more leeway. But over here, I, for some reason, and I know the violence thing is less, less of a problem because it's not a realistic thing to us. It's not something that we, you know, recently remember. The only war that we've had here, other than like the Alamo and a few others, like the big one is the Civil War. And that's nothing when compared to, you know, World War One, World War II. Uh, actually, well, <laughs> it's in Europe, yes. For Americans, no. Well, yeah, I know that. But uh, it was much Obviously, here. more Americans what? died no, in the no, no, war no, no, between no, one saying. half of America and the other half. <laughs> okay, Jesus. all right. All right. Hold on. That was our bloodiest war in terms of, like... How many Americans died? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no shit, because they were I both know. American sides. I know, but... but okay, I that's just like don't... A, I just don't like the way you worded the sentence. All right. So I think you're right in a lot of ways, but that European um, thing with the sexuality that came over here and we've just kept to it more. <laughs> it's, it's this, it's this culture is based in, in Christianity, which sees sex as a very um, promiscuous activity. Yes, uh, it's not acceptable. Sex is a very sacred thing. And so Sex outside of marriage or sex, uh, sexualization, of sexualization in, games, yeah. in anything. Right. It's our Christian roots. It's, yeah, exactly. It's the Christian roots of it. In the southern states, um, I would say the most, the Bible Belt, uh, yeah, which is weird because we came over. <clears throat> most people came over for capitalism, not freedom of religion. There was a was yeah. a powerful thing. But mostly it was for the freedom the, I'm not of sure not being it. a shithole. Uh, the, Catholic, well, I am. the Catholic Church uh, and the Mormon Church, they're all very strong here. And they're all very prevalent here. Mm -hmm. I think 85% of the United States is religious. I'm right. not sure what the percentage is in, the, in Europe is or whatever. But this isn't so much about Europe. I would actually pull Europe and America in as kind of the allow violence and not allow sexuality thing. And I would actually put that Japan 
as the other big game maker, I would put them as the not allow violence and allow sexuality in their well, games. And that's also a religious thing because Buddhism doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't worry about, uh, it doesn't worry about sexuality in the same way, but it does, right. it does like ban violence a lot more. Right. Well, I think, and that's, well, the problem and, with and that Buddhism is, is, is not an organized religion. It's just like a, a spiritualized sort right of it's less some it's less people have structured. organized it but that's not what it is well and intended as i don't know i mean they also come out with some majorly violent shit resident evil is insanely that's violent true they so. do. but i do think a lot of it is the the christian roots and here it's just different i don't know people are just less willing and it's nuts to me that i can you know like you can't have a show where people are you know getting steamy but you can i can see on like nine o'clock television somebody getting their throat slit like that's okay for kids to see, but someone getting it on isn't. Mm, it's weird. I don't think either of them are okay for kids to see. Personally, well, I think one of them is obviously uh, more wrong than the other. I here's senseless the thing. violence versus creation of life. Okay, I've ar- I think I've, I think I've argued with you on this another time before on some other show. Uh, <laughs> I you don't okay there's violence right but as a kid i could watch violent things not that my parents would allow me to i would just do it uh i would watch violent things and i wouldn't react violently i am a pretty non-violent person would you agree <laughs> yeah would we all agree here that i've never hit someone well angrily pushed constantly <laughs> but <laughs> angrily pushed constantly yeah you're always uh, like shoving cameron when he pisses you off on the show here though here here yes we we can attest that okay you're an, a right. mostly non-violent person <laughs> no, i would agree with that yeah but okay. i'm pretty sure if we were to interview some people from your childhood we would have a different story no you wouldn't <laughs> you can yeah. interview dylan me and dylan have gotten in two fights and this is what i do I grab them and stop them from punching me. And I'm usually bigger and stronger. At least I was when I was a kid. I'm bigger and stronger than they were. And they wouldn't be able to hit me anymore. Right? I've gotten in three fights ever. One with Eugene. Uh, fresh, fresh dick is what we call them. And then two with Dylan. So you can ask Dylan about that. Because Dylan would punch. I don't punch. Okay, I'm not a violent person is what I'm trying to say. All right. right? And uh, these are tiny little scuffles that lasted maybe 20 seconds. <laughs> um, however, with the sexuality that I would see, I would jerk off constantly. So what I'm saying is that the sexuality, it has an effect. Whether or not you believe it's a good or bad effect or a, a, it doesn't matter effect, it has an effect. The violence, I honestly don't think violent media causes violence. I think that's one of the dumbest arguments ever. Mm-hmm. It is, but I think the tabooism of sexuality is what causes okay. it to be a problem. It's be, I, people that, that would, that's part of it's it, people but I suppressing don't think it. It's... I really do because there are other cultures where you can walk a woman can walk around topless and it's nothing. If tits were yeah. really something that were just sexualized, that were just yeah. pure, true body sexualization and not a culture thing. They, that wouldn't exist. It's bullshit. It's it's a taboo that society puts on it that makes us jack off to it. It's not that it's <laughs> necessarily more yeah, wrong or more, we're more reactive to yeah. it. It's because it's suppressed. It's something that's shunned. Uh, I, it it I, cultivates and creates a much worse problem. Well, there's truth to that where skirt length back in the way back in the day showing a little bit of ankle well that was sexually arousing. Right. It's and because then, they never showed any of the body. It's like, oh, my God, there's her ankle. I know. Nowadays, they're just like, eh. I can see practically up her skirt right, right. now. If that were the case, then we'd be just like horny as fuck way more often than we already are, which is like all the time, to be honest. But, you know, it's 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 a societal thing, I think. I think you're right. I don't think it's necessarily right or wrong to put it in games, though. I, like, that's where I agree with you. It is it is essentially the same level of right or wrongness. <laughs> well, but see, who is the video game marketed to? Is it marketed to mature thing, yeah. adults oh, did, well, uh, or to children? Uh, okay, so I think for mostly for this game in particular, like they said that it wasn't brought over because they would they feared like uh people getting mad at them for bringing it over and I think that right. might be because of the rise of like a lot of feminism over here. Uh, that has like Easy. become a lot more prevalent. I'm not, not talking I'm not about Easy. feminism here. I'm not trying <laughs> to offend anybody, but I think that that's part of it well, because yeah. like that game is entirely the rise sexually of being aware sexualizing of women. Rights. It is. Yes. So okay. I think that that's really what they were afraid of when they were uh, really because uh, before it wasn't as like um, as big as it was then when they released the other two games. 
Yeah. I I, th- I think you're right about that. I think you're right in many ways, except for one. You did say the statement that they are the same and like worseness, but violence. Here's the here's the argument that most people have. It's like, okay, we're okay with showing violence, but not sexuality. But sexuality, everybody participates in right violence everyone doesn't that's but true violence is something that the human race okay. has decided is not okay right no okay what but i yeah, mean we're is, okay with depictions of it right what i mean is uh it's i don't know it's just as they're equally unnecessary is what i'm saying like the ex- over usage of either is equally can be trimmed it's like yeah, trimming it's pornographic because extra super violence is also pornographic yeah, not, and yeah. not as in i'm gonna jerk off to it pornographic but it's like <laughs> it's like exciting in a weird there's, way to it's some exciting <laughs> there's no Caleb, real it's exciting in a weird way it's exploitative there's no real reason for Look it at to them be all weird. die um <laughs> in it, terms of storytelling just, yeah like you i like how you said how we all participate in sexuality at one point or another hopefully <laughs> um Sorry, and Caleb. with with <laughs> We're, wow. uh, and with these with these video games with sexuality, video games we've discussed before are more targeted towards kids, and that's how adults view them as kids things. Mm-hmm. And so when we see this game that has intense sexual themes, that's going to, uh, we guess we assume, skew their view on sexual matters. That's going to stay with them as they grow up. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the idea is that violence would do the same thing, right? But it but doesn't. We don't. All we know it doesn't. Violence. I've asked this. Uh, I've talked about talked to this. Uh, on the Godzilla podcast, which should have a new episode up by the time this comes out, or at least soon. Um, talked about this on the Godzilla podcast. I was like, hey, Drew, what would you be okay with your kids watching as far as violence or sexuality is concerned? And it's kind of a hard question to answer because like, you don't want to expose them to pornographic images too early because that can fuck up a kid. Um, you also don't want to expose them to violence too early because there's an assumption that it could fuck up a kid, but I'm not really sure if that's true. I'm not sure if either of them can actually fuck it up. I really do think it's just the the stigma you stick on it. The fact that it's like a really hush-hush, oh, we don't talk about sex. It's just this weird thing that we don't ever bring up, and I think that's what propagates the issue. I think there's plenty of studies about um, dehumanization and pornography um, that uh, can argue with that. I'm sure there are. Uh, and we all watch porn, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I know we can't really like. We're not all fucked up, though. I, you, I hope, but I opinion. wouldn't be able to know. Um, what you guys and your your darkest sides? Oh, no, Cameron knows. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, last time I'm borrowing your PlayStation. Yes. <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't know. It's and it's really uh, when it comes to this game, it's a, the developer's decision. They chose to not release it here because they felt the market was not. It wasn't ready for that kind of a game. It's not the it's not the time for it, and that's a totally fine decision. I mean, that's where this argument almost is doesn't matter. It's because it was their choice based on the environment they felt like they were releasing the game mm-hmm. into. Like if you're releasing it to people that don't want to have your game that way, then there's no point in releasing. Yeah, it. you might as well just leave it overseas or wherever. Um, and you know? it's you know it's their choice on how they want to view sexuality or or violence and whether or not they see violence as something super fakey. Which is something that I kind of see. Like I know when I watch a movie, it's all fake. No, oh, right. yeah, super the tits violence. are real usually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but it's all fake. They, yeah. they can the be. The violence is all fake. Right? Many it's... of the tits are still fake. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I was. But saying. they yeah. are like Sopranos. Every single tit is fake. There is boob meat <laughs> around the fake silicone tit. <laughs> So uh, and, and super violence tends to be like awesome. super funny to us. I mean, like yeah. anything that's like too ridiculous, Caleb and I will just like fucking laugh our ass. Yeah, yeah like my like like in that video when she just mm. like that chick got ripped apart by Jason in uh in Mortal Kombat because it was so Which unrealistic. Is, like, yeah, he was bashing her around and her limbs fall off like she was just some sort of action yeah, figure. It, it's right. too much and it's it's super funny. I know a lot of people. Uh, well, not a lot of people, but a handful of people that. Uh, when they when they see super violence like the opening scene to Saving Private Ryan, mm-hmm. uh, which is not funny, uh, or if they see something like Evil Dead or or something where it's like just too much, they get sick and it's not something that's funny to them. Uh, so it's yeah. actually it's a different sensibility. I think I think we're kind of in the Quentin Tarantino camp where violence is funny, and of course Quentin Tarantino is famous for making violence funny, and a lot of people think he's a sociopath for that. <laughs> Um, it's situational humor, just but, very dark. <laughs> so we're in that camp, but a lot of people aren't. And those yeah. people who aren't are probably the ones going, well, sexuality's not bad. We should have tons of sexuality and not any violence. 
And it's like, well, you know what? As a parent, you should probably filter what your kids uh, see. On uh, both, yeah. Uh, it, on both? Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it shouldn't just be, well, well, there's no boobs in it, so you can watch. <laughs> Which is kind of yeah. how my mom was. <laughs> Isn't that weird, though? That so, like A lot of people are that way here. It's, violence is more acceptable. I know. There's a, there's, we're, we're in Provo, so and uh, I, well, we all came from Mormon families and... So it is kind of a it's it's a weird thing to like talk about in in, in this way. Yeah. Uh I would recommend Shinru. I know you you somehow get a hold of a lot of movies that I talk about and uh not sure how, but uh <laughs> Shinru, um uh our question asker, I would say to you there is a documentary out there that a friend of mine will produced called Clean Flicks. Oh my God! Please go watch that documentary because it explores kind of uh, this local culture around here. At least uh, like seventy percent of the local culture. <laughs> the weak um, seventy. And it talks about how they view media and how they view sexuality and violence in movies, as well as like the people trying to capitalize on that. It is a fantastic documentary, and I highly recommend it. Clean Flicks, uh, spelled F-L-I-X. Do you remember when that came out? Even when I was a kid, that bothered me. I was like, come on, you're going to go put your movie through that? Uh, you're talking about the business Clean Flicks? The business, Flicks? yeah. yeah I, was, the movie. I am deeply offended by that thing's okay. existence. Ruins uh, art. I am in a way, but it, like the, the documentary really like it shows you what it's all about. So... Shinru, if you if you're wondering like why our answers are all in like a confusing sort of pattern, go go watch the documentary. You'll learn more about our local culture. <laughs> it, it, wait, 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 wait. So, Clean Flicks the documentary, right? You're saying there's it has a lot of what, what were you saying like right before that? Uh, I'm saying that like you know we have kind of this weird sort of thing around sexuality. Oh, we're Not, we're different than other people. Yeah, say, we might have like s- weird opinions about this. I don't and, think like, it's related to where we're iffy from. Iffy opinions and to me it has a lot to do with my upbringing and like a weird kind of tabooism of sexuality which I still harbor by the way, it's not like something I can just get rid of right? Yeah. Uh, through my upbringing. It's still something I harbor and I think other people harbor it here too uh, whether or not you're trying to like make up for it or whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but that's where I'm coming from. Um, just go watch the documentary clean flicks. Yeah. I don't know. I hate the whole idea of that stuff though. Like, uh, the censoring of movies. Yeah. It's almost like the, the, the yeah. safe rooms for people in college where they're like, Oh, if they're offended by the information they're learning, there's a safe place they can go. Mm. Like yeah. grow some fucking balls. I, uh, God, those things are an irritating. What I, what I like to hear, <laughs> I, my mom told me that she took a, she took a like a history class or a or a film class or something at BYU. Yeah. And the BYU professor said there's a, there's R-rated films in our syllabus and you will watch them because you're adults and you can handle it. Now yeah. was at BYU and I was like, "Oh, good for him." Did she watch them? Yeah, she did. Yeah, see that <laughs> my mom will watch rated R movies. All right. Well, we have a few answers for Without forum. boobies in them with me. From She'll forum. watch them herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's weird all right so well, not uh, for her pleasure I oh are just, you sure yeah i don't know i don't know what it is man <laughs> all right so it's schnitzel answers the question i'm probably in the minority on this but i'm not a big fan of heavy violence or sexuality in games gratuitous violence and sexuality in the media is in his opinion testament to where our society has fallen to Something like Schindler's List is understandably going to have all of that nudity, whereas some of the trash you see on TV and in movies is just throwing all the stuff at us for no reason. Agreed. Yeah, to elicit a response. I realize I'm pretty conservative on this compared to most people. I saw Deadpool and really enjoyed it. So did I. But I probably wouldn't watch it again just because it was a bit too vulgar for me. I... Do not think so, but that's fine. And he listens to our shows. If I had kids <laughs> who wanted to play games, I'd say I'm more okay with violence than the sexual stuff, as your post indicates for the West. However, the kind of violence in those clips is much worse than I would want my kid to be playing. Just in my opinion, I think more mature content can be very well done, uh, like in something uh, such as Dragon Age, where it's handled appropriately. I don't think any of that stuff should be banned, however. I think that's ridiculous. People can decide for themselves what they want to play. 
Not sure if you were saying that DOA was banned or just frowned upon in the West, but yeah, it sounds like he was saying frowned upon, so they just didn't publish it. Right. With exactly. the exception as watermark for where our culture is, I agree with everything in that response. I really yeah. liked his response. I, I really think, did. That was, um, that's, I agree with 100%. I hate the whole argument of societies on a downward spiral. It's I think not. that's nuts. No, it's there's really just not. more people and there's more media, more and, coverage of things. Yeah, the media is yeah. less fair than it used to be. That's all. There's Yeah, there's that too. There's a lot of... <laughs> focus on certain things happening well they're trying to they're looking at the bottom line and you know certain they're news making, stories make more viewers it's than not news anymore it's news entertainment is, you right. know, news has become because uh, they have they're, they're slaves to their viewer base oh right. what is the word the editorialized yeah it's editorialized and it's always it's been that way uh, but it's even worse now and oh, it's yeah. it's about you know making a response so hopefully hopefully the the mass like the majority of people don't like freak out on something that the media like uh no but up. he has a point where more and more stuff like that are making it into everything we watch every day you before he was saying like shouldn't those list it used it as an accurate representation of what was going on whereas just normal sh- everyday right. shows will have more of it for no other reason than just to have it It depends on the um, show though like i think sopranos and game of thrones uses it extremely well Mm-hmm. See, you, Game of Thrones it, a little much on the uh, Game I'd of Thrones say. in the first two Game of, seasons. Game of Thrones, they were a lot of flack for it. It's it for was basically, yeah. hey, I hey guys, it. we have boobs, <laughs> come watch. That was that's the first part of Game of Thrones, dude. There's a lot of there's a lot of whorehouses in the place. You're gonna see some tits. <laughs> You're going to see some fake dog. It is, it is exploitative. Do some of these is, yeah. integral <laughs> scenes in Game of Thrones need to take place while they're performing their... their oh. Look, they're just getting into the realm. That's how it is there. Jesus they need Christ. to represent it accurately. <laughs> All right, so... Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out that Caleb is being sarcastic for anybody who <laughs> believes that Caleb actually... No, this is Caleb being way. sarcastic to hide the fact he actually agrees with what he's saying. <laughs> Well, I'll we'll, I'll watch it anyway. Oh, I I think it. No, you haven't read the book, so you don't know. You don't know if it accurately represents. There is more, much more. There are some things. Like. There are some scenes with like Littlefinger watching the like, girls that are not necessarily was, necessary. It's not necessary. Well, the line he gave, yes, but you could have put that in anywhere. <laughs> yes, you didn't have to see somebody like finger pound and somebody else. To, <laughs> yeah, I know to get exactly. it exactly. All right, so Shinru responds with, "I'm not a big fan of heavy violence in games either." Most of the games I enjoy are usually T-rated, but that doesn't mean I don't want M-rated games to not exist, and I do play those games from time to time, but he much prefers other games like Final Fantasy, of course. You know, most games are teen-rated, so that's a good, that's a fair thing. I mean... Yeah, I guess. A lot of the movies we've seen, and you know, a ton of them are PG-13. It's just a, a vast majority of them that come out, so... Well, that's their money making it is. place because they get a bigger audience. Yeah, because it's not too kitty for the adults. Right. But so it's... the adults feel weird going to a G rated movie. I don't know why, but they do. Yeah. Uh, I've heard the kids feel empowered going to a PG 13 movie. There you go. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some G rated movies have been quite enjoyable. No, 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 one's, no one's disagreeing with you. The yeah. problem is you get these people that are like too cool for non mature content. The freaking that would have been teenagers. me at seventeen. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I get around that age, cuckoos yeah. and see little kids cartoons. But now I'm like, yeah, eh, whatever. I, I still do it yeah. sometimes. I'll, I'll go fuck it. Yeah, you guys want to go see the big star movie? Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah see, I, I wasn't cool with it that day, but not because I'm not okay with watching G. I just didn't feel like it. What are you talking about? When you guys went and saw uh, the big Big Hero Six or whatever? Oh, I never saw that in theater. Well, what was the most recent one you guys saw? Oh, we all saw um, Tangled, not Tangled. Um, uh, Inside Out was Inside one Out. Of the yeah, that's the one. There. And I was like, eh, I just don't feel like it. That was a good movie, dude. So Cloud says our rules make it clear that extreme violence is really not a big deal, but sex is a huge problem. Our laws also say the same thing. The legal penalties for sex, deviants, looking at children, prostitution, are far greater than domestic assault. It's okay to show slash do a man beating his wife by comparison to sexual choices. He will never accept that it's a bigger deal to see breasts bouncing than to see a man <laughs> beating his wife. Totally uh, agree. If the man beats his child, though, he will go to jail for a very long time. That's true. Or his wife. So I actually completely, um, well, I think that they should both be uh, punished harshly, personally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, none of those things are okay. <laughs> None of them. None. I mean, prostitution, I think, should be legalized, but uh, that's totally a different thing. I mean, it's one uh, article I read, and this is this is about music. I can't remember the name of the article. I don't know how accurate the information is, but they've assessed that those who listen to hardcore music, like angry metal music, have used that as a way to channel their anger and they're less angry 
and violent because of it. But I don't know how accurate it is because and because there are some extremely violent people who do listen to that music. Uh, but yeah, is that go ca- the but causation and correlation? <laughs> causation and correlation. But they say that listening to that violent music helps them take hold of their angry feelings and then, you know, address them and they can be angry and then help healthfully get over it. I don't know how violent well, we wouldn't listen to that. the music. I personally wouldn't listen to heavy metal music if it didn't make me feel good in some way. Right. Yeah, maybe I don't that's listen, why. That's why I don't listen to like, I don't know. There's, there's some music that like depresses me and I don't listen to it very often. Right. Yeah. But some days you just got to pound that slayer. I just wonder yeah. how angry I would be without metal. <laughs> I guess a scary idea. It'd be no. <laughs> Sorry, that's a... <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It'd be trying Should've to finish. Down. I would like to see that song playing, and then Caleb like destroy and stuff at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you know that would Come fit in a Quentin Tarantino me. movie. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know? He's just destroying stuff to some Bee Gees. <laughs> Stand alive, stand alive. If you were, if you didn't have metal, you'd be listening to disco. Exactly, that's probably true. I, I was thinking hip hop, but whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. So, do you want to talk we're about some uh, some video game history, or do you have any last thoughts on this question? Um, it's a very complex question. How well, it's to do with complex. religion and with. Uh, I think specifically, I know Shinru. I think he's American. Uh, American like religion in America, and yeah. uh, we of course make the most video games, so that's going to be uh, an issue there. Yeah, it's going to be a byproduct of of that. Uh, uh, and like religion uh, in Japan, the other big uh, video game maker, and how it's different. Although they're they, going to deal with things, as they well. do sexualize children a lot. So and, I don't know what and, the fuck. And our own, yeah. Well, child pornography apparently wasn't banned in Japan until 1993. Ooh. <laughs> when, did, when did it start? That though? explains a lot, actually, of with their <laughs> oh, video game characters. Oh, it holy crap! Too much, and that's why I can't watch their fucking cartoons either because they make me sick. Yeah, they get pretty. Man, they that explains much, so yeah. much. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I know. They sexualize youth uh, pretty... Cameron, the awfully. resident expert on Japanese entertainment. Uh, not that any of us are experts and everybody should have their own opinion and look up their own stuff because I'm sure yeah. I said things that are wrong here today. Uh, uh, yeah, it is way too complex of a question for us. I think for us to answer, you'd have to talk to someone who's uh, more of a social... Yeah, or we'd have to really research expert, it. I guess. I don't know. But that's a that's a hard question to answer, and you know personally, I have my own feelings and views on these things. But it it all is like there's none of it solid solidified. It's all kind of like wavy. Like, well, right. I didn't watch. You know, I'm like if maybe if I watched more things that had a lot of nudity in it, or or like it, I maybe wouldn't have reacted so heavily to it like you were saying yeah uh, but at the same time it. i watched tons of violent stuff uh, as a teenager and it didn't make me violent and it would never would i would still watch violent stuff and i'm like wow i really want to be a gangster and shoot people up and bury yeah. their bodies i think I i'm never, the only one that said that <laughs> i never think that way and i've never like it's it's I can't believe that other people, I guess, I guess maybe other people can be that sensitive to violence where they're like, see violence and like, I shall be violent. But yeah. I don't, uh, I don't, th- I don't. Maybe if that was their only take on what society was, then I could see people being more violent. But since that's just a movie and then here's the rest of yeah. life. Well, and some people can't handle that though. Some people are incapable of that. If they have certain issues, they they are very impressionable from violent things well, and they thus become violent, but that's where it falls on the responsibility parents. of others. Yeah, but, the then, parents. So, but, then, but then you have the argument, is this person already predisposed towards violence and they just happen to like violent movies? Well, it doesn't matter if they're predisposed, you can still regulate it. There's a, there's studies coming out saying that some people might, there might actually be genetic causes for cheating on other people, which to me, <laughs> that, that sounds like there might be. And See, if they, well, you look so happy when you're bringing that news. See, and if to they, me, that sounds like an awesome excuse. To me, that sounds like an awesome excuse. <laughs> right, right. But it does say more predisposed, which means you can still control it. You can just, always control it. You can it. always control it. That's why yeah. it almost doesn't matter if it is or not. You should, there, there's always a way to, you know, keep things under wraps. Also, with the, uh, oh, man. Uh, with the oh. stuff coming out, um, here, you know, we have a lot of games that come out and there's less sexualization, more violence. It is a natural byproduct of it being a very religious area. I mean, a lot of people 
And a lot of people can be against that. But the problem with that is they're like, oh, well, you got to keep religion out of, you know, politics or whatever. But here in Utah, a lot of people give that a ton of shit. And my counter argument to that is it's like an 80 percent Mormon population. The people are of the religion. Thus, they will become there's a better chance of them becoming the leaders. And thus it will, you know, gradually affect it. It's not a bad thing. It's a, it's like an unavoidable thing. We are less religious than Mississippi. Are we really? Yeah. Oh, but have you heard that argument <laughs> Did here? Did you hear now? about that? No. Like, we were the most religious state until, I think we're third now. I think it's like, it's two southern states. One of them's, Alabama, I think number probably. one's Mississippi, the most religious state in the United States. Huh. Of course, it's, it's not Mormonism. It's uh, other sects of Christianity. Right, yeah. But. No, like Baptists, probably. But uh, yeah, no, it's just an unavoidable thing. I mean, it's, they are the people, yeah. thus it will then create. They're yeah. your customers, so you got to please them at the very least. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe in censoring stuff either, but the companies can make their decision. Right. That's, that's what really bugs me. Like the, the whole duck, the duck dynasty thing, people were pissed that A&E took them off for their total bigot and douchebag comments. Now, admittedly, the guy's a cockmonger. He's a fucking asshole, but A&E, you know, whether or not you do and there, his main complaint was you're stifling my freedom of speech. And A&E like, no, no, fuck you. Your freedom of speech is here. This is our freedom of speech, motherfucker. We're free. We're going to yeah. speak not in your direction. If you're representing the company, you should not be right, doing yeah. that during interviews. And so that's why I was like, this guy's an asshole. Like he's now coming back, trying to sue him for suppressing his opinions. No, they're just booting you off the network that paid you yeah. millions for no, your show. I, I agree with you. I think anybody can say whatever they want. Just right. There are consequences. There are, you know, private consequences i don't think the government needs to regulate anything yeah that's as far true. as free speech is concerned right but the company is like just with not releasing this game they chose to not and there's yeah. that's yeah. their own fuck decision. the, F- oh, their fuck the yeah. fda yeah <laughs> not the not the fda <laughs> the FCC. i don't want to have the good FCC. food <laughs> no actually fda good well <laughs> fda uh, good. most of the time good yeah most uh, of the time. let's Let's That's just, another this topic of discussion. Uh, FDA, Next time, FDA. the idea <laughs> of the FDA, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. Uh, let's move on to history of video games, shall we? Yeah, yeah we might as well. We're gonna make Please. that a soundbite, you know. Fuck the FDA, and it's yeah. going to be all over Twitter. <laughs> no, no, don't fuck the FDA. <laughs> oh man. This is Odyssey, the new electronic game simulator. You attach Odyssey to your television set in seconds to create a closed-circuit electronic playground. Uh-oh. Odyssey is tennis, roulette, football and hockey, analogic, and geography. Odyssey comes complete with 12 electronic games and educational experiences. Many more are optionally available like a shooting gallery, a prehistoric safari. Odyssey is an electronic teacher. Odyssey is a total play and learning experience for all ages. Odyssey. It's new from Magnavox. Odyssey. Okay, so the history of video games prelude to the first generation. We're actually going to kind of play a little game here. I have my high chews that I bought from the gas station. I was thinking Starburst or high chews. And then I was like, high chews are way, better. way better than Starburst. Yeah. Yeah. Do we all agree? Yeah. I, I haven't know. consumed either product enough to really have an opinion. Okay. Well, high if you decide, better. if you decide to chew a high chew, please put the mic away from your face while you do it. Uh, but I will throw you a high chew to whoever gets the closest answer to my questions here first off i would like to say that the people on wikipedia where i got most of this information (laughs) uh and uh people just around the world cannot decide on a definition of video games like there's people who go no it's an electronic thing or or whatever but first i gotta ask you guys the there's the there's the one definition that like 80 percent of people agree on what is a video game? Do you not have like multiple choice? Not multiple Come on, this choice. This is America. Give us like A, what? B, C, and D. What? Yeah, that's how we were tested as kids, man. Because no, here's the problem. If I look at it, then uh, then you'll know which one I read off. What is a video game? A uh, virtual reality world that is fully immersive, or at least somewhat immersive, and... Uh, 
It's just a mode of entertainment. Uh, okay. Cameron? Something like that. An electronic program that requires input from a user towards a goal. Okay. Okay. Uh, an interactive experience with a screen of some sort. That was That's beautiful. Basically what I said. Okay. So both of you are, are kind of right. Um, so a video game is an interactive program that shows graphics on a video screen, vector graphics on a video. That's very important. Vector graphics on a video screen. Um, and so despite there being a lot of stuff before that actually happened, uh, as far as like the exact technology to make a video game, um, there are like preludes to that. And I think Cameron was closest as far as like his definition is kind of like one of the definitions people have. It's just an electronic thing that is, uh, interactive basically. Whoop, whoop. Um, so, but we're, you know, they, they strictly adhere with their video game definition as using video technology. It's a right. game using video technology. Mm-hmm. And not all things before that were using video technology. So, before we get to actual video games, do any of you guys know the name of the first interactive electronic game? Oh, God. I knew what it was. I have forgotten. Okay. It's not Pong, though. It is, it is not Pong. It's Dude. basically Pong, though, I think. Give me guesses. The fuck? All right, Caleb, what's your guess? Oh. Basically Pong. Basically Pong? Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, I I know it's not basically Pong, but I can't. I just I just don't, ha- I don't have the name in my head. Okay. Hey, Cameron says Halo. <laughs> Okay, Caleb. Uh, pass. <laughs> a pass? Well, nope. none of you guys are even close, but I guess <laughs> as far as dates are concerned, yeah. Caleb Schweiss, because he had a guess, <laughs> <Shoo-in>. <laughs> actually uh, is the one who gets the piece of candy. The first interactive electronic game that we know of, there are a lot of things where like a lot of universities had computers and mm-hmm. perhaps like they were messing around with stuff beforehand we don't know about it the first one that we know of is the cathode ray tube amusement device in <laughs> 1947 which cre- was created by a guy named thomas t goldsmith jr an american uh physics professor and a guy named essel ray mon i guess it could be a guy or a girl there was no article about them i mean come on guys how could you forget the cathode ray amusement well, i know like it's i mean come on most, mind-boggling under most definitions it's not considered a video game though. no it's not it's not this is prelude to that it was the first electronic it was the first interactive electronic game though. i love how there's a gameplay section uh, on wikipedia so the device <laughs> simulates an artillery shell uh arching towards a target on a cathode ray tube screen, uh, which is controlled by the player by adjusting knobs to change the trajectory of the CT- CRT beam spots at the cathode ray tube be- beam spot on the display in order to reach a plastic target overlaid on the screen. It was basically, the, it was supposed to look like radar. <laughs> That's what they were kind of going for uh, with their game. Uh, so the cathode ray tube is really what video technology uh, apparently it, it comes from it's a vacuum okay. tube containing one or more uh, electronic guns and a phosphorescent screen used to view images uh and apparently it has a means to accelerate and deflect the electronic the electron beams onto the screen to create the images and it may represent electrical waveforms uh pictures uh radar targets or others but uh this game did not have vector graphics so it does not count as an actual video game Apparently. So that was the first electronic. Have you guys heard about this at all? No. <laughs> okay. And I, and I do want to say, like, I want to preface right now in case there's like a real technology geek out there. I am no expert on this stuff. <laughs> and uh, when I looked up, let's say the cathode ray tube, it was very scientific on how it like worked. And so uh, if I get something wrong here, that's, it's very likely I'll, I'll brush over something uh, important about the technology. But that was the first interactive electronic game. And I want to say, I put that on the, the country where all these were from. That one was America. So America gets one point right there. Sweet. Yeah, yeah America. All right. So what was the next interactive electronic game that we know of? Oh, God damn. 
game. So this is not a video game, an interactive electronic game. And I a, think the distinction is an interactive is electronic game. Yeah. Is this one considered a video game? No, it's a... by some definitions, <sighs> but not our main one. <laughs> Almost pong. <laughs> Almost pong. <laughs> that, that's going to be your standard okay. answer. Okay, all right. I think it is you're, this you're one actually. Kind of. 1955. Okay, it was simulating a game. What game was it simulating? Tennis. What's your guess? <laughs> it was simulating... Uh, say foosball. It was, it was simulating, simulating hockey. Um, oh, 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 let's go with water polo. Jeez, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tic-tac-toe is oh. most similar to... Water polo. <laughs> tic-tac-toe? Tic-tac-toe is most similar to Pong. I'll, I'll give you can, Caleb you can just, another one. You can just not give us points. Uh, the fair. computer was called Birdie the Brain. Uh, it's basically an arcade version of Tic-tac-toe, or what we would how think of I as an arcade. How could I not get that? That's like the first thing you learn how to program in uh, HTML. It's it a was, tic-tac-toe game. It was built by Dr. Joseph Cates, Canadian. Oh, North man. America, Canadian. yeah. Uh, for the 1950 Canadian National Exhibition uh, to showcase his new miniature vacuum tube, uh, an additional Ooh. tube, he, cont- uh, he designed a specialized computer to use it, which he built with the assistance of engineers from Rogers Majestic. Uh, the large metal computer, which was four meters tall, could only play tic-tac-toe on a light bulb back display and was installed in the engineering building at the Canadian National Exhibition from August 25th to September 9th in 1950. The game was a success at the two-week expedition, um, and apparently it had the ability to bring up and down the difficulty for players, which is actually pretty darn cool. Uh, And uh, they didn't think it was like that big of a deal what they had created. It was just like a cool little thing that they had for the exhibition, so... Uh, like many of the following things that we're going to talk about, it was destroyed after the exhibition was over. Oh, oh too bad. Yeah, I know. Uh, by the way, the guy, Dr. Joseph Cates, who was a math and physics guy, like most of these people are, uh, he also invented the world's first automated, automated uh, traffic signaling system. Oh, cool. Oh, it's something useful. That's yeah, good. that's pretty cool, huh? All right, guys. You might be able to guess this one. What was the, <laughs> what was the third electronic game so electronic game interactive electronic game not video game possibly not a video game based upon different definitions almost pong (laughs) i swear to god it's coming okay there's one that's like fucking pong but not guys start thinking of not sports for a second here i'll give you that (sighs) what game was it simulating this new this third one what game was it simulating not sports you oh, guess is checkers. I want to say chess. You guess chess. The man's checkers. Oh, man, I would have picked either of those. But it's Backgammon. Do it. <laughs> Backgammon. <laughs> Cribbage. Go. I do know. It actually might be go. It has something no, to do with no, grids, doesn't it? it? Never mind. I'm not going to say, Cameron. Battleship. <laughs> it's, I was going to think something like Battleship. That's what I was thinking. But, okay. but I don't know how old the concept of Battleship is. Well, it's at least since Battleship, so <laughs> okay, go. you should be okay. Not the movie. The, Did you say go? The yeah, board game. No, just Battleship is my is my. Final oh, Battleship. Answer. What were your guesses again? Uh, checkers. Chess. Chess. Checkers is closest. Oh, yeah. What, what was bitch? it? Nim. The game Nim, which is like a backgammon type game. <laughs> you should have yeah. guessed backgammon because it has to do with uh, like, it's a mathematical strategy game having to do with moving pieces. Oh, boy. So I would have. I would have actually gone with that gammon as the closest thing, but Should it's the game of it, Cameron. Man. I wanted to give you uh, some high chew. <laughs> and uh, guys, <laughs> this was chew. after 1950. What? Okay, what? What year was this in? What year was that one in? Uh, this this third uh, c- uh, computer. It's, you guys are never going to guess. It's called the Nimrod computer. <laughs> the Nimrod computer. That was. You said after the 50s. It's after 1950. After 1950, so 1953. 56. 55. Your closest said 1951. Uh, May 5th, 1951. Nimrod Computer, uh, created by engineering firm uh, Ferranti. Uh, what country was Ferranti from? France. Uh, Ferranti? Yeah. He is a. He's from. Give me England. a fucking guess. England. Britain. Italy. Italy. Uh, 
Cameron says England. It's the UK, but yes. close enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was presented at the Festival of Britain. Uh, using Aha. a panel of lights for its display, <laughs> it was designed exclusively to play the game of Nim. Moves were made by players pressing buttons, which corresponded with lights. The machine was 12 feet wide, 9 feet deep, and 5 feet tall. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> these, I mean, some of these computers, um, I'm not sure which one on here. It was like a whole room. It was an entire thing. And that's how computers were. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they're massive. Yeah. So after these... Things started to pick up the pace in universities and research centers everywhere. People started experimenting with electronic games. And this is kind of just like an elite thing for universities that had the money to buy these like giant computers and people to mess around with them. Right. Um, so in 1951, Dietrich Prinz wrote the first limited program of chess uh, for the University of Manchester's General purpose Ferranti Mark I computer, one of the first commercially available computers. And apparently the chess never re- worked really well. And honestly, I don't even think they got chess to work as a video game until like the 80s. Yeah. Um, so Is it the logic behind yeah. it that they uh, couldn't? There were just simulator. Uh, yeah, there's because I think probably the the number of moves that are possible. I think uh, screwed or that was computers. part of it. That was part of it. Um, it had it had. There's a lot of problems with doing the game of chess on computer. Apparently, it was really complicated. Uh, also, in the early 1950s, the Rand Corporation developed a series of combat simulation games of uh-huh. increasing complexity, uh-huh. where the player would enter orders to intercept enemy aircraft or set up their forces to counter an enemy army invasions. Uh, These simulations were not yet true video games, though, as they required human intervention to interpret the player's orders and the final results. Uh, The computer only controlled the paths that the enemies would take. Uh, So Christopher Strachey... All right. um, He was a computer scientist. Where was he from? Strachey? Yeah. America. That's a strategy. Talk into the mic. I'm 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 deliberating. I'm okay. not trying to tell anyone anything. Mm. Well, otherwise it's silence. Strachey? Yeah, Christopher Strachey. I say uh Italy. If you guys want to do that, that's probably Yeah, right. but he's he could be an immigrant to the US. So I'm going to go with the US. Uh I'll go UK again. UK. Yeah. All right. He was a British scientist. Uh, developed a simulation of the game uh, Checkers in 1952. I knew Checkers. Uh, yeah. The first one made on a general use computer, as opposed to a computer specifically designed for a game. Mm. Believe it or not. Uh, and then uh, Strachey's program inspired Arthur Samuel. Where's he from? America. U.S. UK. He yeah. answered U.S. first. Damn. Sorry about I that. Fuck you. He developed his own checkers game in 1952 for the IBM 701. Uh, successive iterations developed rudimentary artificial intelligence by 1955, and a version was shown on television in 1956. So that what, was probably exciting television. You guys, what was the first game that displayed visuals on an electronic screen? So not using lights anymore. Pong. No, it wasn't Pong. Almost uh, Pong. God damn what? It. Okay, all right. You're not gonna guess the name of the thing. What is the game that it was simulating? Tennis. I think it was hockey. Cameron, you have to guess. I know. You gotta say foosball. <laughs> foosball. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. I just um. Let's go with uh, croquet. Croquet. Yeah. <laughs> what was yours again, Schweiss? Tennis. <laughs> I guess that's the clue. It's tic tac toe again. God damn it. Jesus Christ, guys. Uh, Alexander S. Douglas, close? British, uh, by the way, created OXO. This is hot for me. A uh, software program yeah. for the electronic delay storage automatic calculator computer, the EDSAC, or SAC, sorry. Eck, what the fuck? Uh, computer. And uh, it was the first, one of the first stored computers with memory that could be read from and written to, and it filled an entire room uh, and included a 35 by 16 dot matrix cathode ray uh, tube to graphically display the state from the computer's memory. 
Uh, Douglas used one of these screens to portray other information to the users. He chose to do so via displaying the current state of the game. The player entered input uh, using a rotary telephone controller, selecting which of the nine squares on the board they wish to move next. Their move would appear on the screen, and then the computer's move would follow. That's, oh, that's pretty cool. cool. That's yeah. pretty cool shit. Um, so what was the first known game incorporating graphics that updated in real time? What game? Stop answering the same fucking answers that you always do, by the way. What game was it simulating? This next one. The first known game incorporating graphics that updated in real time. I know this is a crazy hard question. Pong. Stop. It's going to be Pong. Pong. Badminton. <laughs> Badminton's pretty good. Tic Tac Toe. <laughs> Cameron. Um, it's, it has to be a simple game. It can't be a sports thing because it's. Sports things are actually like a lot of the first stuff. <laughs> volleyball. No. Yeah. Volleyball. Volleyball. What's closest to pool? Volleyball or pong? Is it actually pool? It's pool. Well, I'd say pong is closer, but you pong. gotta stop giving them candy for wrong answers. <laughs> yeah, just like don't it's the give closest. Candy, it's dude. the closest answer. All right. It's the consolation candy. All right. So rather than only when the player made a move, uh, the pool, so it updated in real time as opposed to uh, <coughs> rather than just when the player made the move. Uh, the game was programmed by William Brown and Ted Lewis. Of what country? U.S. USA. There you go. Uh, <laughs> at the uh, For a demonstration at the University of Michigan in 1954, the game, developed over six months by the pair, featured a pool stick controlled by a joystick and a knob and a full rack of 15 balls on a table. Seen in an overhead view, the computer calculated the movements of the balls as they collided and moved around the table, disappearing when they reached the, uh, when they reached the pocket and updated the graphics continually 40 times a second so as to show real-time motion. I actually really like pool games, too. I used to spend a lot of time on uh, online pool games where you'd play against people. you like, move the stick around. And like, They're pretty those fun. Are, those are kind of sweet. All right, so... <clears throat> should I ask you a question about the next simulation, or should I ask you uh, about uh, the person who made it and where they were from? Hmm. I think we've had much more success with where they're from. Okay, all right. <laughs> with the actual answer coming So out. in 1958, the game Tennis for Two, which is, uh, they're guessing, like all these, all these technologies before were, uh, they were demonstrating the capabilities of the computer, mm -hmm. or they were basically showing off. This was the first game, Tennis for Two, that was created solely for entertainment purposes. Uh, rather uh, than demonstration or research tool or anything like that. I think this is the one that ended up spurring. So pong. this was made by a physicist named William Higginbotham. Sorry if I got your name wrong, Mr. Higginbotham. Where was Higginbotham from? UK. Well, it's obviously not that. Our Caleb would have no, gotten keep, keep it. Keep guessing. Germany. Botham, Botham, Botham. Um, I'm going to guess he is from Canada. Okay, Cameron was closest. It was the United States of America. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Um, so by 1961, there were over 89 different business simulation games in use with various graphical capabilities. Now, now in 1961, we are going to make the first real video game. Pong. All right, according to most <laughs> definitions. Are you ready for this? Yes. All right. <laughs> what? This is actually a very uh this is actually a very um popular game. Could be Pong, but I want to hear everybody else's guesses. 1961, the first real Video game according to most people on Wikipedia. <laughs> I don't think it was Pong. It was something else. Well, I know what Cameron thinks it is. It's <laughs> apparently. <laughs> stop, stop doing that. 
I don't know the title. I think it was some kind of learning game. Tetris. No. No, it's not Tetris. Oh, not Tetris. Damn it. <laughs> That's the tune I was whistling. What's yours, Cameron? What's your guess? <laughs> Oregon Trail. No, I was joking. Oh. It's not my guess. But something kind of like that, though, in my opinion, uh. where they type in type in what they want to do, and then it kind of displays what their actions are. Are you talking about Zork? Uh, no, I don't know what Zork is. There's a lot of games that had that. Uh, Cameron, give me a name. I have no names to give you. Fuck. I don't, what, what was the name of that goddamn learning game? Fucking, it wasn't a learning game. <laughs> it was a game called Space War. Fuck! <laughs> it's basically asteroids. Oh, why awesome. couldn't you guys think of asteroids this the whole time? I because no I always idea. just keep it asteroids in the back. Uh, MIT. Because I thought asteroids was after Paul. It's not that. Yeah. All right. So is, in 1961, but... MIT had acquired the DEC PDP one mini computer. Uh, the system's small size and processing speed meant that the university allowed its undergraduate students and employees to write programs for the computer for fun, basically. And in 1961 or 1962, they're not sure. Harvard and MIT employees Martin. Greats, Steve Russell, and Wayne Whitenen created the game Space Roar, uh, inspired by science fiction books such as the Lensman series, apparently. Uh, the game was copied to several of the early mini computer installations in American academic institutions, making it potentially the first, that's another point for America, making it potentially the first video game to be available outside a single research institute. Uh, the two-player game had the players engage in a dogfight between two spaceships set against the backdrop of a randomly generated background star field. That's cool. Uh, I can't believe you guys didn't answer Asteroids, because that's like the game that it inspired. So after this, like that was a huge deal, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it was spread around universities. After all this, programmers inspired by Space War began to make their own purely for fun, true video games, uh, including a baseball simulation written in basic by John Kemeny in 1965, a basic bingo game by Larry Buthram in 1966, a basketball simulation game uh, made by Charles L. Batchelor in 67, uh, in 67 also a baseball simulation game uh, by Jacob Bergman, uh, yeah, Bergman, uh, Space Travel, written by Ken Thompson uh, in 1969, uh, which apparently was part of the development of the Unix operating system. Uh, and then Hammurabi, a text-based game written by Doug Diamond in 1968. And uh, that was converted to basic in by David H. All in 1969. So at the beginning of the 1970s, video games existed mostly uh, entirely as novelties passed around by programmers and technicians. No one was making any money, basically, with access to computers, primarily at research institutes and large companies. But that all changed with Pong. What game? Pong. Don't answer Pong. Answer something else. I'm what answering game? Pong. Space Invader. I'm going to go Asteroids. Fuck. We got uh, Space uh, Invader. We got Asteroids. A little thing with this, where they're space shifting invaders. down. Space, <laughs> space Invaders <laughs> wasn't down yet. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Fuck it, I'll go with Snake. No. <laughs> was it mine? <laughs> it was Galaxy Game, uh, which is basically just like Space War, apparently. Um, wow. In 1971, Bill Pitts and Hugh Tuck developed a coin... Most of those were just Guys, this is wins. important. A coin-operated computer game, uh, Galaxy Game, oh, oh, man. at Stanford University, uh, using a DEC game. PDP-11 computer... Uh, inspired by Space War, of course. Uh, and they were thinking at that point, they were thinking, let's make money at this. Because like, it, was, it was popular at, on the campus. And they were thinking, well, you know, maybe we could ship these out and uh, put them in bars and such. And they could make some coin money, right? Like the idea for an arcade game came from these guys. Um, but unfortunately, because of the computer's price... Um, 
they weren't able to really do it successfully. They had their prototype, and apparently that cost like sixty thousand mm. dollars for their prototype box, where people wow. could just come in and play this game, coin operated. So, but they are kind of genius because they did that. Yeah. Um, in September of nineteen seventy one. The pair met with Nolan Bushnell, who informed them of his own game uh, that was very similar to their game uh, that he was making for a much lower price on a much smaller, cheaper computer. Uh, they tried to put the Galaxy game on this cheaper computer, uh, but apparently like it was too much for the computer to handle. Uh, and so Bushnell decided to uh, make his own machine, whose only purpose was to play his game called uh, Computer Space, I believe. <coughs> and the box and everything, apparently, for this, for this, what we would now say is an arcade game, mm, yeah. it cost about $100. Oh. <laughs> so the other guys kind of failed because their box cost $60,000. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, a bit more. And Bushnell, with his partner Ted Dabney's thing, cost uh, only $100 to make. So, guys, what company, you might be able to actually guess this, what company did Nolan Bushnell and Ted, Ted Dabney create? Atari. Atari. Who answered that first? I think it, I think it was me, but Cameron It was a tie. It. Cameron needs more candy. I'll give it to Cameron out of pity. You've been giving Caleb plenty of pity wins, so no, I'm close. he's gotten the closest. Dude, okay, I don't Pong know. is not anywhere near fucking tic tac toe. You should have no, just no, said no. fuck you. That's not here's the a thing. Real you said hockey. Hockey is like a big field game, and Pong is on a tabletop. And so to me, hockey? tabletop is closer Pong to is the game of tic tac toe. Fuck you. All right, no, we're, it's, it's we're moving on. No, it's it not. is tennis. It's dude, dude, dude. Pong is fucking hockey, man. Yeah, if the net was like infinite you in pong in you pong, just have to bypass you know their little pong their little bar ping pong that well yeah that's which is a mini tennis which is a tabletop game Tenel, tabletop tennis is yeah. ping pong. all right so guys can you guess how many units their first uh their their game computer space uh sold how many units yeah hundred thousand Ooh, it's a Fifth, lot let's go with uh, uh five thousand i'll go with like 500. 500. You're closest. It's 1,500 units. Uh, well, that's and they, no way, they right? made Bushnell a <laughs> I didn't cool. Think it would it do wasn't that well. a huge success, apparently. It made him a cool $1 million. <sighs> Holy uh, fuck. In what, what the 70s? After this, Bushnell and his partner Ted Dabney immediately started working on their next game and called their company Atari. One of their programmers, Alan Alcorn, uh, came up with a certain sort of simulation. Named Pong. Fucking Pong! Yeah! <laughs> In 1972, and uh, they made their boxes for that, and apparently that sold how many units? 100,000. <sighs> this, is, this is not, this is the arcade version. This is like they would put the oh, big box well. in a I'm fucked. In so. a beer. In a, in I'm going to go with... In a beer? Is that what you said? In a bar. I'm That's gonna a go, big beer. I'm going to go with 3,000. Damn it. I just said 3,000 before you. He did say 3,000 before you. Do you have another oh. guess? <sighs> 3,500. You're closer, I guess. Damn it. It was 8,000 units oh. uh, in 1972. So guys, there's just one more thing we have to we have to cover here, and this is actually a huge fucking deal. The very first video game console. What was the name of the very first video game console? I want to say Atari thirty six hundred, but I no, I'm not sure what the Ataris are. Is it I'm the not ColecoVision? A, oh shit! I Cameron, do you have a guess? <sighs> what Caleb said, ColecoVision. Guys, keep guessing. The, you on. you have this name in your head somewhere. Uh, the Nintendo. <laughs> no. I don't. I don't know what it is. If it's not Coleco, it's like an Atari. It's plug and play TV. It's the first one that PlayStation TV Portable. <laughs> 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 I don't know, dude. Uh, Do you have TV's exactly the right amount of candies? Box. 
I have this one for me now. Oh, I thought you planned it. Uh, this is the Magnavox Odyssey. Oh, the uh, Magnavox. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen that before. Yeah. So the same year that the uh, that Atari put out their giant Pong machine, uh, it was the same year that the Magnavox Odyssey was released, which was the first home video game console that could be connected to a TV set. Nice. Uh, the inventor, Ralph H. Bayer, had initially had the idea in 1951 to make an interactive game on a television set, but unable to do so in 1951 with the technological constraints at the time, he began work on a device that would attach to a television set and display games uh, in 1966. And the brown box, the last prototype of seven, was licensed to the company Magnavox to adapt and produce. They announced the console in May of 1972, and it went on sale that September. Uh, apparently, it came with a, a few video games, um, and including a game called Table Tennis, which um, I guess the programmer at Atari had played a demo of when he decided that they needed to make Pong. So he kind of stole that, but they, there were tennis simulations beforehand. Um, and uh, the Magnavox Odyssey would sell over a hundred thousand units in 1972. It cost $100 and it basically the Magnavox Odyssey kicked off the first generation of video games, which included, I believe the Atari, but I guess we'll find that out next time now, won't we? Yep. Yeah. So you guys, I'm disappointed in all of you so much. Well, yeah, I don't joke. If you were on the other end of this, you would have been. <laughs> I right don't consider us. most of. I would have gotten. Uh, I would have gotten the asteroids one. I would have gotten Space War. That's what I thought the first video game was, and I was kind of right. I don't consider any of those video games though, and most people don't. There was a game that was like a radar version of Pong, <laughs> where they like it like bounced a light thing off, and I remember seeing that as one that is recognized as one of the firsts. But I don't know. All these ones you talked about, I had no idea about. So, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll give all the prizes away. I'm going to keep this one for myself because I honestly thought I'd have more at the end of this. But <laughs> guess not. But you gave them away too easy. You're like, well, this is the closest. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I just asked too many questions. All right. It's all right. I had fun. Did you guys have fun? Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was it was a fun, fun. interactive yeah. little. Yeah. Yeah. It was all good. Right. All right. Uh, yeah. Do we have any news? Uh, we might have a little bit. Okay, let's so, get to it. All right, so first up in news, we've got a Sega Publisher Weekend on Steam. Ooh. Yeah, um, you get you all can... your Sonic games. Yeah, no, get some good games. <laughs> uh, we've got some... <laughs> Well, there are some Sonic. There games. are some Sonic games. Don't get me wrong, but we've got some Warhammer. I know a few of the listeners are listeners are really into that. Looks like Total War, Attila, Dawn of War. This huge Warhammer collection looks like war, it's like ten bucks. War, war, war. Company of Heroes, war. also a war, war game. War never changes. The Total War Grand Master Collection includes twenty eight items. What is it good for, really? Everything. <laughs> Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. All right, so uh, <laughs> yeah, this is forty-one bucks. It's originally one hundred and sixty-one. Ooh, it's got every Total War game that's come out. Those are pretty solid games. So. Total War. When, do, when does that? Yeah. Uh, when does that sale end? Um, eh, you know, eventually. It says Publisher Weekend, so I assume it's over the weekend. Oh, okay. So. So, so pony, you, guys, you guys have today pony up the funds and fucking buy it. <laughs> uh, other than that, if you're listening to this right now, <laughs> yeah, you have about an hour. Get the fuck on there. Other than that, I've got another humber, a humble, a humble bumber, a humble bundle. And uh, this one looks like it's a bunch of indie games: Ocean Horn, Shadow Run Chronicles, War Machine. Ten percent off, uh, twelve bucks or more, and you unlock Gray Goo. The definitive edition. Now, this is the ultimate goo. The ultimate. <laughs> it is so yeah. gray. So as uh, as with our other recurring themes, a lot of indie stuff. But, you know, if you're into that, go for it. Okay. And check out the Total War games. Uh, I think all of us would enjoy those. Uh, maybe we'll try one for a review. Especially sometime. Caleb. He loves to play against me in Total War. Dude, those fucking castle things are so bullshit. Yeah, it's tough. Did I beat you storming the <laughs> castle, too? No, I kicked your ass. Okay, yeah. When you storm the castle, it's like almost impossible to win. Yeah, it is like not okay. But uh, they're fun. They're fun uh, little games. Mm -hmm. so don't trust the, don't trust the victory uh, potential bar. I had a team of cannon dudes, right? My only troop in the area was like a, a group of cannoneers. They were cannoneers. taking pictures everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kodak moments all over the... That's cannon. The cannon. 
No, but um, <laughs> I had like a group of them, and it was against a a group of in- infantry men, and they're on foot, you know, with their rifles. Yeah. And uh, it gave me the victory bar was like ninety percent chance of winning, and I'm like. I- I don't know if I can because it's just cannons like then they're going to just come for me. So I went into the battle anyway, and it was literally five to ten minutes of me just like priming, shooting, missing, priming, shooting, missing. And these guys are just fucking slow. Sounds like my last night. Yeah, They're like slowly just crawling towards me and I end up killing like four or five of them and then they just stop. They like get into formation and then like eight of them just draw and fire just blow me away. So. <laughs> have fun with that yeah it was so dumb i'm like hit him you fucking idiot <laughs> no it was just wow. all right so i found some news about star wars battlefront so we do oh. have a release date of a new dlc oh man dun, dun, dun. it's gonna be april the 5th the 5th and it's going to be for 14.99 is it the fifth? The fourteen ninety nine. Um, I just didn't want you to confuse that with April first. Oh. Uh-huh. Anyways, okay. um, if okay. of course if you have the pass, <laughs> it, it comes with it for free. But there's actually quite a bit being released with it. There's going to be four new maps. Um, one being Jabba's Palace. Oh, I always loved that one in Battlefront Two. And we've got a few new weapons coming out, but also two new hero characters. One's oh, going man. to be Greedo. And one's, yeah, and one's going to be Nian Nump. Nian Nump. What? what? <laughs> okay, I think I know who that is, but why the fuck Greedo? Like, Osa, they're just like, oh yeah, Greedo's a big enough character. Are there going to be just add him? Are there going to be more? Uh, yeah, that is kind of bullshit. They've got all sorts of people. They yeah, have fucking Darth Maul and. Well, they're not like, doing. Uh, they're not doing new stuff. The prickles. Yeah, that they they're not part of it. At all. Huh. I mean, look at it. Look at the lore in Battlefront. There's no prequel stuff. Huh. It's all uh, it's all original. But there's still other people they yeah, could throw still in. There. They you can put Obi Wan in. Old man Obi Wan. Yeah, fucking Obi Wan, or you know, <laughs> Greedo. Uh, I, I guess they are kind of running out of options if they solo. If they're only doing original stuff. Yeah, that's. I don't know. That's weird. A new game mode. Also, it's called Extraction has players extracting a valuable shipment of resources and bring it to the transport ship before time runs out. Ooh, mm. sounds like all the other <laughs> game modes. <laughs> <laughs> um, V-10 rifle D- um, and the, uh, the DT-12 blaster pistol. Um, while star cards feature the scatter gun, Deoxys grenade, and adrenaline stem. Mm. So a few, all sounds like gibberish to me. Well, some of it was, but <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the Outer Rim DLC available April 5th. Yummy. Mm. It's all about that Outer Rim. Rim job that up. All right. Please. Uh, I have a sad piece of news for EverQuest fans. <sighs> the next game in the series that was going to uh, that was going to come out for EverQuest. EverQuest next is no longer the next EverQuest. Oh, man. EverQuest Next, uh, although it had some like awesome video footage and stuff, it has been canceled. And uh, developer Daybreak ha- made the announcement on its website, said after much review and consideration, Daybreak is continuing development of EverQuest Next. For the past 20 years, EverQuest has been a labor of love. What started as a deep passion of ours as game creators grew into a much larger passion shared by you, millions of players and Daybreakers alike. Watching EverQuest's ability to entertain and bring people together has inspired and humbled us. It shaped our culture and has emboldened us to take aggressive risks with our game ideas and products. When we decided to create the next chapter, the next, I, I gotta say that the next chapter. Is that the next chapter? Uh, in the EverQuest journey, we didn't aim low. We, uh, we set out to make something revolutionary. Uh, unfortunately, apparently when they were trying out the game, it just wasn't fun. Hmm. Wow. So they so, fucked up then their mission. Then. They done fucked up all of those. And they canceled the game. All right. That's fair. So it's it's just too bad. So for EverQuest fans, it may be a while <laughs> Sorry, before Pedro. they get another EverQuest game. I think EverQuest 2 was actually the most recent EverQuest game. So think, it's, think, it's yeah. been a while. Well, the first one 
I think they're still updating. So, yeah, they they do continue to support uh, the first two EverQuest games, but um, it's unfortunate that they won't be having a sequel anytime soon. Mm. Well, I have a sad piece of news for those fans of Fable. Uh, <laughs> Microsoft has decided that they no the greatest longer greatest game of all time. They no longer like. <laughs> Uh, having Lionsgate Studios around, so they are closing its doors. They're not selling off the company. The company's not able to put itself out. Microsoft is just saying no uh, more. Yep, they're just shutting it down. They did the same thing for <sighs> Ensemble. Mm. They bought it for. Uh, they bought it, had them do Halo Wars, and then shut it down. <laughs> they went out on a bad game. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Bad. That's too bad. I know. I know there was some problems at the studio about their next game they were making like kitty versions of fable like mobile or something i think uh, that they were making uh a connect version of uh, a fable game okay that's yeah, what i mean by kitty next <laughs> um yeah and i don't know if that will still come okay. out i think it might have been canceled that's wow yep. so no fable 4 not in the near nope. future no more fable and what sucks is that microsoft is shutting down the company which means they still have the rights to that shit yep. it's yeah it's not so like lion's game lion I uh, not Lionsgate. Lions Head Studios. Oh yeah, Lions Head, yeah. They can't uh they can't go out on their own and try to make their own thing. No. Nope. They have Microsoft as a publisher. Microsoft owns their assets. That sucks, dude. Yep, and Microsoft will probably not, you know, pick up on Halo again. That sucks. I mean not Halo, uh, Fable. So no, I was like, hey, they're gonna hit dry. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're gonna dry Halo out. So. Well you think that Fable Two was such a success and I think Fable Three did pretty well. Didn't yeah, it? Fable Three did all right. Why it wasn't as they, big, but why would they not good. want money? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is a mystery. It is a mystery. Maybe they just know that RPGs don't sell that well on the Xbox One or something. Yeah. That might be it. And that's what they want to focus on, obviously. <sighs> Those motherfuckers. It is unfortunate. Yeah, we will be uh, eventually. I think playing Fable Two and Fable Three, though, for our show. So maybe they'll get. Uh, maybe they'll have a second after we review it. They'll be like, "Oh, we should bring it back." Yeah, oh, man, listen to this review <laughs> for the, the clan. People, the people want it for the clan. <laughs> the four people in Utah want it. Um. Okay. Well, that's some sad shit. Yeah, it is. Shall we uh, get fat? Yeah. Let's move on. Let's get fat. All right. Um. This week, I haven't really done much. It's still kind of behind. <laughs> Are you saying you're a sedentary man this week? Is that- <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll resist it. Uh, yeah, don't, don't fucking do that. Don't what? Play the drop? Yeah, don't fucking do it. Anyway, uh, so I... I the- you know... Wow. You, you teased it enough. You might as well play it. <laughs> now it's too late. Dude, yeah. play it. Yeah. The, the listeners at home are going, You know, it's a good thing you're not a big fat guy, or this would be really difficult. <laughs> you're not amused by that at all? Nope. Why not? <laughs> no, not a little bit. <laughs> Not a little bit because why it's so no, great. It's because like it was only added to insult me, and so not necessarily. Yeah. Joe's a big fat guy too. Yeah, he could use it for me. Yeah. You just make it too easy, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so why haven't you been uh, watching your movies? Your animated. Uh... I have been watching movies. Just uh, I haven't caught up to where I was. Okay. Uh, yeah. Did you watch anything this week interesting? Or? Uh, the most noteworthy one would probably be Corpse Bride, which I had not seen previously. Was it any good? I've never seen it either. Uh, it was okay. It was okay? It's, it's another Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas type thing. So, you know, it's like, that one was actually directed by Tim Burton, yeah. as, as opposed to Nightmare Before Christmas, which was written and produced by him, or but, co-written but not, and produced by him. But not actually him, directed. But yeah. not directed yeah. by him, and so like his involvement is actually like it's iffy. Yeah. Well, he wrote most of it, though. Yeah, I know he came up with it, but uh, but he didn't direct it. And a lot of people think it. he did. Yeah. Everybody thinks he directed that movie. <laughs> Everybody thinks he directed Coraline too. It's like he didn't direct nope. those. Nope. No. Go ahead, Cameron. Um, I think I made it to the gym one time last week. <laughs> Woohoo! I know it's actually a mon- monumental. You made thing it more than me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just, uh, like you, I wasn't here last episode, just, just been dealing with stuff and um, some of my goals have been falling away. I haven't, however, been lacking on the book reading, which is still going on. Oh, I finished good. yet another book and what I book? am, I finished, um, Lord of Chaos in the Wheel of Time series. Lord of Chaos. 
<laughs> um, and now I am on the next one, um, the Crown of Swords. This one at seven, eight, nine, and ten are probably the slowest books in the series of the nah, dude, time. Five is the slowest. Uh, five is where I stopped. So yeah. five, I will have five, to say, five is the slowest I have read. Yeah, stop five, during one. <laughs> five shut down, Joe. Pretty hard. Well, well. Let's see. I I've read it all before. I enjoy it, so I'm I'm gonna be just fine. Okay. Well, uh, how's the uh, financial tracking? Um, it failed this past couple of weeks for some reason. <laughs> I haven't been keeping track of finances. Tisk tisk. <laughs> and to, in light of that, I have I have a negative amount in the bank account. Because oh, man. Do you get charged the daily fee for that shit? No, not a daily fee. I think it's like every week man. they'll tack on another 25 Dude, I get charged a daily fee if I'm Ooh, how much? $35. A day? Yeah. That is oh. insane. And you if, give me crap for using credit cards. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty brutal. It's Dude, not, I would be severely in debt by the time I got my next paycheck if that was true. It's supposed to happen, but... It, it just does. And it's awful. I have I have it set on my bank account so that I wouldn't overspend to like it won't allow me to make a purchase if it go if it takes me into the negatives. And so because of that, I, I think I, I think that's why I get the fee. If like uh, a health insurance payment comes through or something and I'm like, shit, <laughs> you know, it's my fault for not having money up, though. That right. happened to me earlier this month. Well, what happened? I was going along, going along. I just did not quite have enough to cover my car payment to seventy five, and that comes out. Whoosh, I have nothing, so I'm just living off of what I have stored in the fridge. Hmm. Living on the edge. Well, <laughs> is that all the goals you had, Cameron? Um, um ma- uh, play a musical instrument. And we play talked about that. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna ninety day it up. It's gonna Sweet. be great. Eventually, we got to plan that out. Yeah, we do. All right, so I set a new goal for myself this month. It was to not spend any money on anything and then use all the extra money I had to uh, throw towards my house. Now, I failed on that. I have bought I bought some peeps the other day with my codeine cough medicine because <laughs> I was like, man, I feel like shit. I'm going to buy some peeps. Okay. So I spent probably... Man, I'm going to buy some peeps off. I spent probably about 70 bucks this month on non Do you still have any peeps left? I don't. I ate them all. Because I heard that if you put them in the microwave, some funny things happen. Yeah. yeah j- microwaves grow. Dwayne, they, like, was, grow. It's yeah, awesome. Dwayne was saying he did peep jousting where you like put a toothpick in each peep <laughs> and you put them next to each other and see which one like stabs the other one first. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do that. It sounds pretty fun. It sounds pretty awesome, but I haven't done it. I, I ate them instead because I love them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've been kind of faulty on that goal. Plus, I went to the Instacare a little while ago to get like a... I've been coughing forever. I've been sick for just eternity, right? And I went and got it checked out. And they're like, oh, it's a sinus infection. So I just treated that. And then I went back again because I've been coughing up blood. Uh, it's like a very small <laughs> amount, but it was still concerning. So I had bronchitis, but... That was like $126, so I paid the one visit, now I'm going to owe the other one next month, so I'm getting kind of fucking hosed on that, but at least I'm not dying. Uh, Yeah, that's true. So that goal's been kind of iffy, and that's one that I set up just kind of spur of the moment, but I think I will still have another couple hundred bucks that I can chuck into paying off my home. Sweet. So no fast food uh, trip after this then? No, I did buy some earlier though. I bought some (laughs) Carl's Jr., so that's why I've been kind of slacking. But it wasn't even Tommy's; it was Carl's Jr. It was breakfast wow. stuff, man. It was good. It's, did you get that uh, summer sausage, whatever they call it? Yeah, it's freaky. The, yeah, he called me and told me about that. It's like a hot dog <laughs> cut in half on the breakfast thing. It was it was odd. It was what? good though. I still ate it. I mean, I'm <laughs> you disgusting. Call, you had to call Caleb to is, well, exclaim uh, he about was, this. He was calling me about something else, but he happened okay. to mention it. Yeah, and then I went off on that for like ten minutes. Yeah. How freakish it was. <laughs> But yeah, so I've been doing that. Let's see. Um, uh, school. School's going great. I'm, all my grades are like A, A minus right now. A, uh, a yeah. My there, classes a, are, my classes are pretty minus. easy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Three of them are Yeah, his, his hot yoga class. Yeah, Ooh. that one's easy. Um, so yeah, I've got three classes Just that are... Just sit in the back and watch? No, I can, though. I'd only have to be there. I don't have to actually partake, but I like it. And... Uh, so yeah, there's like three of them are 1,000, and then I've got like a HR class that's fucking brutal because it's 8 a.m. on Saturday, but whatever. Um, so that's going well, and 
I didn't. I haven't been doing the push ups lately. I was doing that uh, that hundred push ups a day thing three days a week, mm. and I kind of stopped doing that because of the my sickness. Like my body was just starting to hurt really bad, and like I don't know, I just felt like ass. But I am gonna start that up again this week, so we'll see how many I can do by the end of uh, let's see, two weeks from today is when we'll have another fat segment. And I got yeah. up to doing being able to do like forty or forty five straight. Wow. So I want to see how many I can jump into now. But yeah, other than that, I haven't been doing anything. I saw Deadpool. It was great. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. Fuck, I, I think that's all my goals, isn't it? Uh, except for a musical instrument. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> haven't started that. <laughs> Which I had remembered last night. I was like, they had goals, didn't they? Yeah, yeah that was one I jumped on the Cam Cam bandwagon mm. for. I was like, oh, that would be fun. Uh, so I haven't been doing much towards fitness or health because I've been too busy as well as too poor. Um, well, too poor doesn't really have anything. To- no, it does. Cause I can't buy like no, food. You, you can't buy stuff. I have to buy. F- fuck you. Why? Every time I get here, <laughs> what are you, you have to about? do the don't cry. Uh, a zoo thing, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just starts off. It's such a sob face. Here's the thing. Okay. I don't have money to buy healthy food. I think I want to go back to a low carb thing or something. Cause I'm really blowing it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with I all remember the, your with all the rice. Thing. I have rice. Yeah. Literally, I have rice and beans. We have to keep Joe away from the sharp and objects. <laughs> rice, <laughs> rice, beans, and ramens, and, and nothing bloats me more than beans and ramen. Yeah, ramen's pretty rough. So yeah, well, back on your low carb thing, you're like, oh, I'm hungry, Cameron. Can you throw me a handful of sausages on the grill? This freaking greasy as fuck sausage is just... <laughs> it, he does lose weight doing it, though, you I do. do. lose weight doing that shit. He lost more weight doing that than doing Insanity, which is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. That, that's not right. Yeah, but I did feel better on Insanity than I did. Well, yeah. Like, I feel whenever I'm on the Adkins, which is, like, no carb, uh, that's, uh, I feel weak. <laughs> yeah? Like, yeah, weak, too weak. <laughs> Which is uh, too much. So I'm, I'm thinking I should probably, probably, especially should at least take a walk or something a day. But I'm just, oh, I, I haven't had fucking time, dude. School is nuts right now. Yeah. It is insane. They're all, they're all high level classes. I have five of them and they are project heavy. And so I am, oh, I am just exhausted. Even playing fucking video games is like too much. I'm like, I just want to go home. And put on some stupid comedy show. Beat off, fall then, asleep on the couch. And go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you have that commercial you have to, to, to uh, direct, don't you? Yeah, I'm directing that commercial next Tuesday. I got to do all the paperwork and stuff for that on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so the day after this podcast comes out. Uh, and then there's also, I have to do a rewrite on someone else's short script. And that's got to be done by Tuesday. The filming for that's going to be on the 25th. So that same week as the commercial. And then I still have two short film projects I have to get done. And 50 episodes of Game of Thrones. Point. 50 episodes of Game of Thrones. Eight episodes of Sopranos, I think. Or exactly. 10. Eight episodes of Sopranos. I still am trying <laughs> to. I have watched a couple movies to try to get back to my 365. I watched Borat, which was I've never seen before. Uh, I just missed out on it when it was a thing, and it was one of the funniest fucking movies. <laughs> Cameron walked in when they were like doing the naked fighting. Cameron walked right in <laughs> on that scene. I see him laughing his ass off, and his dick's just flopping everywhere. I'm like, what the hell <laughs> well, are you there fucking was watching, like, dude? Have you seen Borat no, twice? I oh my god, I will watch it again just to have you watch it with me because it is. Have you seen it? I haven't. None of us have seen this movie in here, really. I, like a bunch of stupid people. It was people the number one movie in junior high. Well, it's in the it's in the one thousand. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll, I'm willing to see it. But <laughs> the problem is, is a lot of the dude. It is a lot of stupid people. Have we're always seen, talking about. Have it, you so seen like, <sighs> any of his other movies, Sasha? But like the Ali G or the Bruno? No, I haven't, dude. Bruno looks repulsing. They are they are <laughs> repulsing movies uh, in a way, but my God, are they hilarious? I'm sure I would. Love uh, it. So speaking of hilarious, the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon sequel, <laughs> as well, which I want to get on my soapbox on right now for it. Here's He's handed the in thing. a soapbox he keeps in his back. Okay, pocket. so I have for the last like five years, yeah, about the last five years, 
Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon has replaced the Matrix, uh, Jaws, Jurassic Park, and, and Kung Pao Enter the Fist as my favorite fucking movie of all time, right? Because there's mm-hmm. like movies that I think are the greatest movies of all time, and then there's movies that I will watch over and over and over yeah. again that like mean something to me. There's something about the story that I need to like revisit myself just over and over again to get something out of it every time I watch it. Yeah. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon has been that thing. So for the last like three years, while the Weinstein Company has been like slowly putting out little bits of information on the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon sequel, like, ooh, John Fusco, the writer of Hidalgo, is going to be the ooh. screenwriter. And uh, the director, they were they were messing around with directors. The director of Fearless, mm-hmm. uh, he was going to be directing it for a while. At least that was the rumor. Mm-hmm. But then they were like, no. Then he, he put out a video of him being interviewed. He's like, I'm not going to direct Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon too because he felt that like it was the only person who should be allowed to make that is ang lee uh and he felt he said he's a chinese film director like he's a hong kong Mm -hmm. action movie director he said it is the citizen kane of kung fu movies it is the best kung fu movie ever made yeah it should not be touched there should not be a sequel made of it and besides the fact that the end of that first movie is not an open for sequel ending this is the Oh my God, people are dead (laughs) Uh, kind of ending. And there's no way that there's going to be a sequel to that movie, right? Like if you were to watch, did you think, oh yeah, open it up for a sequel at the end of the movie? No, I thought it was wrapped up very nicely. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. There's there's no way there could be a sequel to that. And uh, they tried to get Zhang Ziyi, who I'm not going to spoil the ending, the first Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but it is not uh, likely that she would come back. Um (laughs) They tried to get her on, and she said, no, I'm not going to come back unless Ang Lee's directing it. Uh, previous to the Weinstein Company having it, Ang Lee was thinking about making a prequel, but then he decided to do Brokeback Mountain and Hulk, and of course that worked out really well for him. Not Hulk so much, but Brokeback Mountain <laughs> worked out very well for him. Yeah, I wonder what the prequel would have been if that's what came after. Um, there were <laughs> Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is, is the fourth book in a five-book series that's oh, really okay. popular in China, apparently. And um, they didn't follow the book very well with the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And so like that ending apparently happens in the middle of the book and like less people die than they have Mm. die. Um, But this this new movie apparently follows the fifth book really, really well. And it is just not good. (laughs) It's not bad. It is just not a sequel to Crouching Tiger in any... Like, every time that anything from the previous film gets brought up, it suddenly becomes really shitty. Because then you're like, oh, yeah, I remember the first movie and how much way better it was than this movie. <laughs> so Yuen Wo Ping, the guy who did the the action mm-hmm. uh, direction for the first movie, as well as, like, Kill Bill and The Matrix, he did all the choreography. Yeah. He's a, He's a very popular filmmaker in his own right. Um, he directed Iron Monkey and Wing Chung and True Legend and uh, Drunken Master, I think. Is that really? right? Really? That was him? I, I, uh, I, I want to say know. it is, but I'm not sure if it is. It might be Jackie Chan who directed that. Uh, I think he's directed Jackie Chan before, though. I don't know if Jackie Chan actually directed Drunken Master, but I, can, okay. I honestly can't remember. He's right directed now. some Jackie Chan it's movie. It's okay. Caleb's and looking I it think up. It's who is Drunken it, Caleb? Master. It's uh, Wu Ping. It is Wu Ping. Oh. Yeah. Cool. See, look at that. Look at that knowledge. So he has very good movies in his, like, past, but none of his movies have the emotional weight <laughs> or, like, the sol- solemnness or the ballet-like aspect. I mean, he mm-hmm. brought the ballet to the fighting, but, like... Yeah. None of that stuff is in his movies, and none of that stuff is in this sequel. It is a regular UN Wu Ping middle ground kung fu movie kung fu movie schlock <laughs> is what it is it is mainstream hong kong cinema is what it is when mm-hmm. crouching tiger hidden dragon the first one was an art piece like an art house cinema sort of a thing uh with some amazing fighting in it this one has uh also some amazing fighting in it as it would because it's yuan wo ping mm-hmm. but then it has this 
China, like mainstream Chinese feel, and I hate mainstream Chinese movies. They're <laughs> they're worse than mainstream Hollywood movies in a way. Like they're they're le- they have less depth than a superhero movie does. <laughs> like that's because that's mainstream Hollywood right now, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's just it's not good. It it, it kind of has bad cgi all over it which is uh not something they used in the first crouching tiger yeah um so the movie costs twice as much but looks half as expensive <laughs> i <laughs> i don't know there's uh, it's it's kind of awful um it's in english oh yeah that when the first movie was in mandarin <laughs> uh which what the fuck <laughs> I don't know. Right? Yeah. And also, the first movie was in super 35 anamorphic ratio. And uh, so that's the really widescreen format. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon Sword of Destiny is in regular widescreen, like, television format Uh. size. So there is nothing. (laughs) There is nothing about these two movies that, like, looks or feels the same. It's just that Michelle Yeoh is in it somehow. She, she uh, in an interview, said she thought of it as a completely different movie, uh, which is how they how they did it. Okay. Michelle Yeoh uh, is in it, and she talks about um, she talks about Chow Yun Fat's character, whose name I just escaped me. I don't know why. Um, and then Donnie Yen comes into the picture, and she was apparently he was apparently the lover that she thought had died before. And he comes in and there's Kung Fu fights and there's like two pairs of lovers, including Michelle Yeoh and Donnie Yen, as well as Snow Vase and the other guy who's part of like some evil gang. And it's all about getting the sword again. It's like it's like a cheap copy of the old movie, but at the same time, it's not the old movie at all. I don't know how to explain it. It's not a bad movie in its own right. Like, it's not bad. But it's not great, and it's not good even. Like it's, uh, yeah. I, I don't know how to express my disappointment in this movie. Not that after I heard that it was going to be in English, I wasn't like, "All right, this movie's fucked," <laughs> which is automatically what I thought when I heard that. But um, man, dude, I am I am so disappointed in the Crouching Tiger sequel. Yeah, I I, I would imagine so. Uh, that movie was really good and the fact that they even like attempted a sequel is I don't know blasphemy. Why. I don't know why they did that. Like it's legitimately I would be surprised if someone could find me a better martial arts movie than Crouching Tiger and Dragon. Uh maybe Kill Bill Volume One and Two put together, but not Kill Bill Volume One or Kill Bill Volume Two. Um even even Enter the Dragon, I think, it doesn't have the narrative complexity of Crouching Tiger and it's it's much more of a popcorn y type film. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's Enter an, the Dragon. Is Enter sweet. the Dragon may be a more important movie to Kung Fu movies, but like, I think Enter the Dragon's not as good of a film. So, do you kind of want to tell this movie to get, uh, get the fuck back in your fucking hole? Nah! Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think, uh, I, love I think, that. you know what I think would be cool? Uh, if I'm so now that I'm a big time commercial director for my dad's friend, right. uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll, I would love to, uh, I think it would be cool to publish all the source material and in all five novels of whatever this is. And then like do like a Lord of the Rings esque, like gigantic where they film the five <laughs> movies at a time, like in each Kung Fu movie is like different in its own like style. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool to have like a, a Quinn. Uh, what is that? A Quinn Quintology, a Quinn. Uh, I don't know the. I think Quintology sounds right. Something like no. that. Something. It'd be cool to have like all five books have their own movies and for them all to be in Chinese. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. That'd be a cool project to to do. That'd be a mega huge project. But apparently, this sequel made more money in China than the first movie did. The what? first movie was not a big hit in China. It was a huge hit in Taiwan, but not in China. Mainland China. Hmm. Um. So I don't know. <laughs> I hope they don't make a third one. I hope the Weinsteins leave it the fuck alone. Yeah, uh, I'm no sorry. I was I was kind of excited for it a couple of years ago, but as more information came out, as the more they tried to appeal, the less they appealed. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to see how well it does in the end. There, there's some shots in it that are pretty, 
beautiful actually there's some like good cinematography and there is one fight scene on ice that was legit legit fight scene so like as a kung fu movie fan you could probably watch it but as a fan of the original it might be tough Mm. yeah because it's like it's a middle ground kung fu movie with a lot of good action i might have to watch it just for the kung fu okay i don't know because i like crouching tiger too but mm. yeah i don't think i'm gonna watch it i don't give a fuck (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, you don't like kung fu movies, so there's better movies. But I do like the first one; it was great. All right, so on that sad <laughs> note, yeah, the f- <laughs> the, I needed a place to express this. The forty minutes of Joe is over, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so you know, let me know what you thought of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, uh, Sword of Destiny. <laughs> uh, yeah, jump on the forums. It's <laughs> jump on the forums. Nude Clan dot net, which will redirect you to Ultima Final Fantasy dot com. And there's a nude clan section. Please try to keep it in there as to not confuse Ultima Final Fantasy Ultima listeners. Ultima Final Fantasy listeners or even ourselves. Uh, you can also go to Facebook dot com slash nude clan gaming, right? Nude Clan Podcast. Nude Clan Podcast. That's N E W D. God, we're so confused on that Facebook shit. Well, it's super, super fucking dumb. Uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash Nude Clan Gaming, spelled correctly. Uh, nude Clan Podcast at gmail.com. You can find me at Joseph DeGolier, D E G O L Y E R. Me at Obsidian Ba, B A H. And then you can find me at Nude Clan Cam. Ooh. Me at UFF Podcast. Yeah, make sure to check out our other shows if you uh, like Final Fantasy. Check out Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. You can also find the Godzilla podcast on iTunes, which should have an episode of Mothra up by Tuesday. Sweet. Check uh, out my fan fiction podcast, Super Sexy Swing and Fan Fiction. And we didn't get any <laughs> iTunes reviews this week, so uh, if you could put a iTunes review uh, for Nude Clan, uh, that would be great. Uh, give us your love, give us five stars, and then also give us your hate in the description. That's okay. Uh, I don't care. Just the, give us the five star rating that uh, that really helps us out. Indeed, um, it does. Yeah, and also be sure to ask us questions on the forums. We always enjoy reading those and discussing them. Oh yeah, there's a lot of shit that everyone that <laughs> listens to Ultima suppresses because it's Ultima. And now I'm seeing a lot of that coming out, like okay. those Shinru's questions. All right, shit that we wouldn't have even touched on Ultima because it's not prevalent or necessary to final fantasy well, it is it is more more prevalent in 14 we've noticed with the you know the everyone being fucking naked but other than that <laughs> game there's been you know no examples so yeah it's a good place yeah good place to get some tasty questions in all right well we'll see you guys next week all right enjoy the nude may live, the list go on live always in the nude fuck off yeah!